Did you just refer to me as White Devil? This is how they know you. All right, you lot. Let's make television! Your time has come, you smug bastard! The aliens are here! We're all going to die! So what's up, B? Watching the game, having a bud. True, true. What's that? Yo, who's that? Yo! Yo, pick up the phone! Hello? Who's that? What's that? Yeah. Yo, where's Dookie? Yo, Dookie! Hey. Yo. What's that? What's that? <laughs> Hold on. Hello? So what's up, B? Watching the game, having a bud. True. True. Hello, hello. Can you hear me okay? Wow. Dude, did that, did that, <laughs> did, did the music and the video actually come across at the same time? Yeah, yeah, okay. I did. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I'm, I'm working on my, I'm working on my intro type stuff. So, Wait, you made uh, that? Did you make that? Oh no, no. I, I mean, I, I didn't make the whole thing. In fact, I actually do have one for my other channel. My more, I, I, I've taken a, um, a page out of your book, separating the art from the politics, like separating the art from the artist. All I right. Have this, I have this other channel with like a meager four followers because I never do anything with it, but I made an intro for it. Because there's all this uh, vocal, um, there's there's all this content out there on different news uh, channels about uh, Biden wanting to have a reality czar. So that's my other Twitter handle. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. So like, yeah, so I, I have this I have this thing where like different different talking heads are talking about reality czar, and I just strung them all together. And the odd thing is, I can premiere. I can never get the audio and the video to line up quite right. So, anyways. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I've been um, trying to, um, it's, you know, we learn by doing and to quote Captain Kirk, Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan in the turbo lift, explaining humor to Lieutenant Savick because we all love context. So that's why that just happened. We learn by doing and uh, we can only do when we have an opportunity and the opportunities are few and far between. So. You know, if, if it still seems like after all this time that uh, StreamYards has been a thing and I'm fumbling around like, uh, you know, some old man trying to walk on ice, that's why. <laughs> I, never get a, I never get a chance to do it. But, um, you know, it's, it's, still, uh, it, it's still fun to, to, to give it a shot. But man, how, how are you doing? How's life in the, how's life in the, uh, in the industry? It's going well, actually. Uh, you know, I had to change my brake light because it went out. It was ah. relatively painless. You know, not too bad. Then um, grabbed myself a glass of wine and came up here, plugged in, and here I am live. Okay. With oh, Identity sorry. Crisis Design. You're, uh, you did the same thing that I did. You started drinking as soon as you got done with your task for the day. Yeah, and also uh, did another thing, but I will not. I'll keep that to myself. No, I know. <laughs> but you're in California. I think you probably talk about that, unless it was like. Yeah, but no, I rather I rather just keep that uh, to myself. Although, <laughs> although uh, according to a Norm McDonald, Norm McDonald murder is um, now legal in the state of California. So <laughs> That's true. You are doing. You're still off the hook. My wife just took my last piece of printer paper, and then. I'm, I'm trying to plan ahead for the next time. Dude, for, for real, um, uh, every once in a while I have a um, – I sell different uh, tools for the uh, pinstripe community, and every once in a while an order comes in, you know, and I have to, like, print out a, a, a label. Yeah. And unbeknownst to me, there was a point in time where my daughter, she's she loves the Marvel characters. 
Okay. As far as Disney is concerned, like she. Really oh, okay, so she's into the the Disney characters essentially. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Exactly. Scarlet Witch and whatever, like all of them. Right. Um, she also has no concept of how uh, short a lifespan a color printer ink cartridge lasts. I did not know that she did this. I just saw like saw it on her wall one day, whatever. I came into her room and say, why don't I have any black ink left? And there was literally every Marvel character in existence printed in color. And I mean, from the movies, you know, Hulk, okay. right. Captain America, every single one of them lined up uh, like on her wall and i see like by the time i got like some of them didn't have the greatest color and some of them had really good color i'm like oh that's where my black ink went <laughs> <clears throat> so now i keep one on hand all the time and when my, my wife just came down here to like uh grab a piece of paper i'm like i've got one more piece of paper left so we got uh tim and uh, marvin in the chat today that's two more than usual i i, I was trying to uh and this is a very a very short promotion thing like when i said give me a couple of minutes i'm like all right i gotta build the thing and i gotta right. copy stuff um so uh um i'm not gonna turn my camera on because i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen tabs open on my brave browser and this is a 2008 mac uh and the the graphics card has been maxed out for the year that for like the, for whatever this thing will take, but I still don't trust it to do. Oh, and uh, pops is in man. Pops, you, you don't, you don't want, yeah. And I, I get, I get that. You don't want people to see your porn tabs. That's cool. No, they're actually not. <laughs> so I, I was thinking about like, oh, I want to talk about something tomorrow. And I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get into like, you know, like I don't want to like harp on the same subjects at, that everybody else. No, has. you know, uh, oh, okay. We'll, we'll start with something. I've been watching, I started watching Reacher for on, on oh, Amazon Prime. Oh man. Yeah. Now I heard that, I heard the character, the, the, the guy playing Reacher actually is, and did we talk about this already on a private stream? He's yeah. actually the same like he like when you uh when lee child describes jack reacher right yeah yeah big huge like muscle right. bound dude yeah right 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 um i never read the novels but uh, i think kimo sabe our, our boy kimo sabe um mm -hmm. he tweeted about it and he gave it like a good review and I, I trust his judgment because i've seen enough of his uh, youtube uh, critiques right. and i always think that he's like he 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 and i like the same kind of stuff i i realize so Cool. When he recommended it, I was like, "All right, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out." And so I I started watching it on Thursday, and at first, like the first I would say half hour was kind of like, "Okay, whatever," you know, this is this is okay, I guess. But then Slow the fight scene happened, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> and after really? that, was, was like, the choreography really good? Oh, dude, it was great. Uh, now, they, they, before, they keep like they keep the shaky close up camera shit to a minimum. I hate the shaky camera. Oh, me I too, love dude. When me they, too. When they, when they pull back and just like this, like a static shot, that's one of the things that I've always like really appreciated about Stanley Kubrick. But I think that like Stanley Kubrick would have been a really good action director only because like he'll do that thing where he grabs you by your ears and makes you stare at those elevator doors and you cannot look away. Right. You know what I mean? Like that, like that's, that's the kind of thing that I want to see in action. I don't want to see shaky camera um I, I just watched last night and i highly recommend nobody nobody like, oh yeah uh bob odekirk yeah I, you know honestly man bob odekirk like he's a yeah. hilarious actor he's a great actor too but yeah. i just i don't know man like is it really no, good no, some, of that, that, some of that leaks over I'm, I'm telling like i'm watching this movie i'm like you can tell like when you're really into a movie and you're like all right i need to look at, into like what's going on here so you pull out the imdb and you start right. reading about like the guy that directed this is the front man for a, a a rock band like an indie rock band but he's also directed one other movie hardcore henry like and there's my, that one I haven't either, but my son, like, he, he had to have it for Christmas because it's it's all POV. The entire thing is you are Hardcore Henry. Oh, I see. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. I think right, I seen the right. trailer for that movie. Yeah. Right. And he does a little bit of that in this movie, like, for one scene where a gun is being tossed from one person to the other. 
and it looks like the camera is on the gun. Oh, I see. I mean, so you you know you so your whole point of view is the camera flying through the air. Right. Um, I've actually seen somebody do that with an airbrush writing script on a t-shirt before. I was like, oh my god, oh, look, even Marvin do that too, even, right? Marvin Winston. Okay, like Marvin says, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have, I'll buy it to my list. Y'all check that one out. Yeah, and now and the, my only copy, and, and, and I have to. You know, I tried telling Jimmy Reyes the other night through chat, and his whole thing was just going crazy because he was like, he was drawing, and his wife was right there, and they're having their interaction, and it's always fun when uh, Jimmy and Anna are on the same thing. And I'm gonna put this in the in in the chat, and it's all it is. And I think I've told you about this before too. Is uh, the Real Good app? If you go to RealGood.com, like movie reel, Real Good. And then you can tell it what streaming services you have so that if you're looking for Hardcore Henry, you just put in the search bar, bar Hardcore Henry, and it will tell you if it's streaming and oh, cool. if it is, which one it's on. Because he went off on this, ta- he, he went off uh, talking about like, I had to look through Netflix and, and HBO Max, and apparently like, on it has a job working with media and, and I guess one of the fringe benefits is they just have streaming services or uh, something. Oh, okay. if, unless I'm misunderstanding, they are drowning in streaming services over there, which is a real bad problem to have. Right. right. So um, but he's doing this thing where he's like, I couldn't find it here. I couldn't find it there. I couldn't find the movie I was looking for. And like three times I'm like, I'm trying to make your streaming. I'm, I'm trying to make your, your time at home. You're streaming like really chill. Read this chat. And they were reading all of the like all these other ones. No, seriously, man. Um, I, I and some of them were like, "Go back and read this thing about real good." It's made my life so much easier because you know how it'll happen. Like one day you'll just, uh, at some point, you'll just get this. Like I haven't seen that movie in a while, or I always wanted to see that movie. Is it streaming? I don't know. Are you going to look through HBO, Amazon? Are you going to look through Hulu? Well, to be honest with you, I actually just uh, go on my search engine and just type it in, and then it'll, it'll let me know right then and there if it's streaming, like where it's streaming. Right. This thing is on. Well, yeah, and, th- and that's what this does. Now, like on my phone, it's a pain in the ass. And a lot of times, even though I'm not supposed to, I'll just have my phone set up at work so that I can, you know, like see what's going on, uh, watch a movie, listen to a stream or something like that. And uh, I'm not going to sit there for like five minutes when a manager could walk in. And what are you doing on your phone? Yeah, go to the right. real good app and just find the answer right there. Anyways, anyways, the fight scenes, the fight choreography, the guys that are doing the fight choreography in Nobody are the guys that he's fighting. So you're not just seeing actors fight. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So you're seeing the stunt stuff. team doing the, the stunt work. Exactly. The guy that's taking exactly. the blows from Bob Odekirk's character is the guy that did all that. He trained for two years before he started filming this movie. Oh, that's, and cool. When, that's cool. And one of the fun parts is that his, his family gets robbed in his house. And, and, and one of the reasons he wanted to do this movie is because he had experienced the same thing. He had... Oh, wow. Yeah, he had, um, you know, experience, experienced a home invasion not once but twice. Oh wow! Yeah, right. <clears throat> Anyways, um, I wanted to. I, I should have this uh, open, anyways, um, because I'm streaming and I've got like all these windows and Indiegogo is not one of them. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta make sure that. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed this? Uh, I don't know. Do you ever uh, look at Indiegogo on your phone? Um, not often, though. I usually go on my on my computer to look at it because it's it's so much better to look through on my uh, laptop. Yeah. Okay. Um, I must be out on the road uh, a ton <clears throat> or at work whenever these things come to me because. Um, now, I actually don't know exactly who's in the chat, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna ask it. If uh, uh, if that's a uh, Marvin, throw a link to your Indiegogo so that I can display it on the screen here. I know <clears throat> it's not an Indiegogo; I think it's a Kickstarter. Oh, um, cool! Yeah, right. yeah, I I have a couple of these. And um, wait, yeah. does, does Marvin Wynn have a, an active uh, campaign? 
Yeah, in fact, uh, the cool thing about it, he's local to me, and I've seen a couple of the comics. Oh, in, cool! And I have I have a couple of them in. Um, I've read them. They're you know uh, bagged and boarded, and uh, they're at my local comic shop here, as well as a uh, heroin Burke, who I've uh, I actually got to meet a couple of those guys when I was I went to like one of the first. Um, uh, one of the first cons that showed up in Pittsburgh, and it was an outdoor. There was a light rain, intermittent light rain, but I got to talk to both of these guys, and I hadn't been to a con in such a long time. It was um, it was a it was a pretty cool experience, it's because I've gone and set up a tent and tried to sell my stuff before, and so I know what it feels like, and uh, and that's what these guys were doing. You know, I, I got a, a bunch of cool uh, local comics, and not just indie, but like independent and local you know it was like like going farm fresh you know for your comics <clears throat> um anyways um there was something that i wanted to ask your opinion about and and it, it kind of had to do with the um uh, son of kal el do you feel uh, comfortable talking about that and then um, it doesn't have anything to do with the politics of it it has something to do with um things that comic book companies will do to try to bolster sales right right um i don't care either way uh but we could talk about it yeah i just don't have an opinion about it because i really honestly don't care <laughs> I, oh, don't no, well, care it's, I guess, it's, I guess uh, the, the point that i'm uh, the, the the point that i'm trying to make it doesn't have any it doesn't have anything to do with the um um it doesn't have anything to do with the story, what the comic or, or what the character is trying to do or where they want to stick their junk. It doesn't have anything to do about that. Um, it just has to do with, you know, what what comic book authors or or uh, um, comic book companies will do to try to get the numbers up on something. Right. OK, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, Marvin, I'm not showing the link, but I should have it in my email. So I'm going to look for it. I'm going to look for it there. Anyways, okay, so um, let's see. I want to go. I think I have these things set up the right way. So I'm going to try to share this tab. And the first example I was going to bring up was actually, I'm going to pull this over here, separate my tab, share the screen. And brave tab and it's going to be wow there's a lot of them give me a second i, I gotta i have to read words All that's right. cool okay uh you see this okay yeah you do see it all right yeah. so you remember the death of superman <clears throat> I, I remember that okay i actually had all this stuff like set up last night so hopefully um hopefully this is working so uh, <clears throat> and I was actually kind of surprised that uh, some of the stuff came out like I remember it like it was a lot more recent than it actually was. You know, like, um, you know, the death of Superman was uh, when did it come out? Uh, I think it was 90, yeah. 95 yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it was like or... the 90, yeah, 90s. Yeah. Uh, one of the best selling DC comic stores of all time, Death of Superman, 92. If you remember in the early 90s, yeah, <clears throat> you remember in the early 90s where there was like variant cover craziness. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, everybody, you know, remember it's comic speculators, they're buying all these comics, they're buying all these number ones, and they're going after all these special editions because they think at some point that they're all going to be worth thousands and thousands right. of dollars, yeah. like a first printing of Superman and adventure comics are action comics number one <clears throat> problem being that when everybody's paying attention to something like that not like they did back in the day um comic books were being folded up and shoved in back pockets right or being right. thrown into the garbage by your yeah. mom <laughs> and uh, all right. this. so you know the the uh the rarity of the thing was you know causing the price of every individual yeah one. absolutely oh, it, it, right. yeah the, the higher the 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 rare the more rare it is the higher the price right which is why the dollar doesn't buy as much as it used to because there's so many of them being printed all the time same same right. concept you're right. right diamonds gold all that 
this thing sold over 2 million copies. I don't know if you can see where I highlighted it right there. It sold right. over 2 million copies. <clears throat> now, um, that's because any, I guess you would, uh, any normie or somebody who even just, because every, everybody's heard of Superman. Right. Everybody knows who it is. The, uh, uh, the, the, the movie written by or directed by um, 1979. I can't remember the director right now. I, I, I can't believe he directed Lethal Weapon too. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep hearing Suskind, but I think he was a producer. No, that wasn't Suskind. It was, uh, oh gosh, it's in the tip of my tongue. See, it's happening to you. It's happening to me. Well, it's happening to me because That's I'm a little you're... drunk now. I'm a little buzzed. So you have to. All right. Well, me. I'll tell you what, man. I'm on my third rolling rock. So cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> I mean, as far as you know, it's three rolling rocks. And I should I should know the guy's name because Donner Richard Donner. There you go, Richard Donner. Just yeah, my rolling rock and just right there. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, you will believe that a man can fly. Everybody knows Superman. Um, right. TV shows, cartoons, whatever. He's a household name, just like Kleenex and Lysol. Right. Okay. This is what do we have here? Article markets top 50 October 2021. Yep. Uh, okay. And this is uh, Superman, son of Kal El at number 44. I thought I had these tabs in order because I had a, I had a, 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 um, a string of thought. You're now, fucking up, man. You're fucking up, Dave. Oh, no, I am. <laughs> Everybody expected that to happen, including me. That's that was uh what was that October? We have it right there. Yeah, October 2021, because number six is the one that we're talking about. Okay. Number six okay. is the one that everybody's talking about. Okay. It caused that it caused that huge uh huge problem with uh um uh who the hell is writing this? Tom Taylor. Tom, Tom Taylor, Taylor, yeah. Yeah. Tom Taylor, yeah. Right. Okay. And then we have November 2021. I know he's in here somewhere. I'm going to have to go. Oh, I'm misspelling super. I put a Y in there like syrup. <laughs> I may go on a little tangent right. in a moment, but I'll I hope you... so. No, I hope you do. Okay, <laughs> it no, may not be what you expect, though. Just no, uh... no. I, I, I don't want. I, I, I don't want to be the only one that's doing tangents. Okay, now, son of Kal El is number six. Okay, number six in terms no. of like. Oh, I'm sorry, number five. Number son of Kal El number five is at the ranking of, of number six. Number six for all time like record oh, selling comics. You know, no, sorry, that's going to be November of 2021, top 50 comics by units. Oh, okay. Okay. And that uh, was number six. 50, he's at number six, but it was issue number five. Issue okay. number four was at 44. Now, here's the thing. Now, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I, I'm going to try to try to clarify things. Um, Superman, Son of Kal El, I did not read, but one of the things that I do know is that we did not have a first kiss here. Number four, okay. number five, we've got a first kiss. Okay, right. number six is when he actually says, "Okay, I'm the gay." And right. where is he at? Yeah, he's at forty-five. No, that's actually Superman, son of Kal El, uh, number one. Okay, now the actual issue number six which was delayed is at 42. Okay. So what we have here, I'm actually going to get rid of this one because I honestly don't think that annual number one matters because it's not, it's not, uh, it's not, it's not the same, uh, the same string of thought as far as writing goes. Son of Cal L number four, nothing, but it's Jonathan Kent. Son of Cal L number five, first kiss. Okay, this is actually goes along with the, the concept of why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free. Right. Okay. Right. Son of Kal El, where he actually comes out and says, Hey, I'm the gay, is number 42. So okay. so the popularity of the comic jumps from 40s to number five 
or and then or to number six. I'm getting confused here. Yeah, number six, issue five, number six. And then the next one goes right back down to 42 because everybody's already figured out. Okay, that in in other words, it's like this. The uh, the the people who are speculating over something like the death of Superman get wind that mm -hmm. Superman, quote unquote, those who wouldn't even know that the current Superman is son of kal -El, Jonathan Kent, that Superman, we're just going to use that wide broad brush term superman kisses another boy right <clears throat> is going to be this have the same effect as superman's dead okay nobody who actually follows the comic book that they only know that superman is dying they're going to go out and get it because they think that something crazy is going to happen and that this issue is going to be worth something someday not thinking that millions of them are going to be sold and that that book is actually worth nothing my theory is that the same thing happened here, but it also happened with the whole um, uh, when you uh, <laughs> when you don't force someone to marry you before you have sex with them. In other words, <laughs> no, no, I, I know. I, I, go ahead and laugh because I, <laughs> I because I think you're laughing because I, hopefully you understand where I'm going with this. Nothing, nothing was happening with Superman, son of Kal El. Just a regular book, number 44, five, he kissed a boy. It goes up to number six. Right. And then down in the next month, number 42, number six down, goes down to number 42. The hype is all over with. Him actually saying that he's the gay does not matter to anybody. In other words, like all of this stuff that happens when uh, the SJW community gets into writing these books Mm -hmm. only matters to it's 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 like it's like uh why is the traffic going so slow oh there's a car accident and i have to rubberneck and look at this thing and by the time you get to work it's you're not even thinking about it right okay so i, I believe that that's the, you know the thing where now we're looking at um tom taylor here oh okay yeah you know what i gotta i gotta get better with sharing my screen here Hey, yo, all right, all right. Is the link show the shoot? Yeah, I, okay, so like Marvin Wynn is saying, they um, they actually did radio ads for this book. I'm assuming they did radio ads for number five. Okay. What do you say? Because uh, cause, cause th that's going to be one of the things that explains why it's in, at slot number six. Thank God that there's somebody in the chat that knows more about the stuff than I do. <laughs> I'm going to have to, I want to share, um, cause I'm like going through links. What I ought to do is share an entire screen and share this one. That way, when I go through the links, you'll be able to see in all of my tabs, there is, there is no porn. Okay. So here, <laughs> I know you, you, you close them out before you share the screen. That was smart. There's was so smart. many up there. <laughs> There's so many. But no, go on, go on. Well, you can see down here, number 44. Right. Cal L, number four. Nothing happened. The, the numbers are actually screwing with me. Four, four, four. Everything's in fours down here. And then we have uh, number five is at slot number six. First okay. kiss. And then we have down here, number 44, Superman, son of Cal L, comes out. Literally nobody cares. <laughs> Right. It's you know it's already it's already happened. You've already gotten your milk and now it's time to move on. And honestly it, it's it's actually sounds weird saying saying milk. Um yeah, that that this whole <laughs> yeah, this whole article is and and to tell tell you the truth, I got to say um just you can see this this is a much softer jawline than this. And, 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 but I, I can't see an Adam's apple here. I'm only assuming that it's there. Okay. So anyways, um, the, but this, this whole tweet string that went along when uh, Tom Taylor's talking about, you know, stick around for the end of this. It's worth it today. I woke up the piles of strangers, blah, blah, blah. Right. He says something about his, um, with the sales don't what he says is the sales don't actually matter to the quality of this oh, i've blocked 
<laughs> and I didn't even realize that until just now. Because <laughs> I remember replying. I, I remember replying. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I remember replying to the, to the tweet where he said, I don't know. He goes, the, oh, the sales of the book is not directly related to how well the story is. And I'm like, that's actually exactly related to it. Like if you suck at your job, you don't get to keep it, you know, uh, unless you're subsidized. Right. Yeah. You know, like of course. That. That's so weird. That's. I'm nobody. No, seriously, like, think about it. I am no one. I've got, like, not that. Right. Okay. This is the amount of media I don't watch. Because it was in the media before I came out, and I'm here doing this stream. But the other the, but the other point that I'm, I'm trying to make here is that um, I've got, like, Literally, I like I don't know, like zero followers, but I don't believe that I have so many followers on Twitter that somebody would take note of me. Like he's an industry professional, I'm not. I'm just trying to get page three of my own book done. Yeah, you like you you're inside baseball on this. You know how that goes. Why in the world would somebody actually like like go through disagrees with me block go, going through their stream disagrees with me block disagrees with me block it's got to be it's got to be what it is it's got to be like an automatic you know he he disagreed he no he replied to my tweet but didn't like my tweet therefore block mm. okay anyways that was funny all right another one death in the family reprint second printing third printing fifth printing sixth printing they all they they, they kill somebody they kill Robin, and this isn't even Dick Grayson. This is uh, Jason Todd. Yeah, yeah, Jason Todd. Yeah, right. Third, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, eleventh, twelfth. It just all fourteen printings of this book, and you know this is due to people. Like, I'm not saying that it's not a good story. I'm sure it was, and there's going to be a soap opera aspect to it. Where, like, I got to know what happens next. But do you really think that I got to know what happens next leads to fourteen printings? I know Batman's a popular book, but you know that there's people out there who are the same people in the 90s. This is even before the 90s. This is 88. I'm grabbing the Chrome cover. I'm grabbing all of the variants because I think this is going to be worth something someday. There's got to be an aspect to this. And the only reason I know that is because I would think that way, and I know that I'm not the only person that thinks that way. Dark Knight Returns, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, eighth, ninth printing. Do you know why this thing got so many printings? I'll give you, uh, I'll let you answer the question because I know you know the answer. Uh, I actually don't know the exact number, to be honest, but I know. No, no, no. I don't mean like, I, I don't mean how many, but like, what do you think drove that this book would get 10th printings? Um, it was a great story. Exactly. It was well executed, but exactly. but I, Dave, I guess I guess my question to you would be, why is that so bothersome to you? Uh, because it's the same kind of gimmick, right? No, this was a great story. This isn't a gimmick, right? So I'm I'm. So read... My question is, why is it so bothersome that that uh, that the current state of the DC corporate structure? Is it doing what they're supposed to be doing, which is hyping up good stories, good or books. what I want to do, or what I want them to do? Why are they not doing? Yeah, what yeah. Do? Because um, right. now, if I may, if I may go on my own tangent. Sure, sure. Um, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't like, remember honestly, tangents for this, so <laughs> well, you, you deserve it. Well, honestly, I personally don't give a shit about anything that's going on with DC or Marvel anymore. I stopped giving a shit. I don't give a shit. But the only reason why I know about it is because it's in my feed. So I'm aware of it, but I just don't ever engage in it because honestly, truly, I don't give a shit. <laughs> like I really don't. I, you know, Tom Taylor is going to do what Tom Taylor does because right. he was recruited by a DC editorial staff who liked his work enough to give him the book. And that's out of our control. And if we don't like what he's writing or producing, then we don't buy the book. Right. And I think that the only the best way anyway for the marketplace to really 
um, shine, I guess, not shine, but I, I guess to really work is if the buyers just stop buying the book. And then the people who are producing the book are going to see their numbers go down. And not, you know, because no, remember, bad publicity is good publicity, right? So if, if people are right. talking shit, in their eyes, they're going, fuck yeah, we're winning because people are paying attention to it, at least. People are, are people's eyes are on it. So mm-hmm. who cares if we're not making any money? People know about the product. They know about us. Well, that's so, supposed to lead to money. Right. So it's supposed to lead to money, but it doesn't. All it does is, is but maybe it goes to the other avenues, like uh, the, um, maybe Tom Taylor gets paid by Twitter to, for hits, for all we know. And so he does that on purpose so that way people can hit his his uh, Twitter account and he gets paid. You don't know that. Well, I can see. I can understand where there's um, – I can understand that there's like an exposure aspect to it. Yeah, and so I say – I I say, you know, exactly, Marvin. Like, oh, if you wait, take wait, off wait, the sunlight like, – like, like, Marvin just, just commented. If you take off the sunlight, they will shrink precisely. Yeah, so right. I, I say just fucking ignore it. Ignore it and it will go away. It's going to die. It's gonna die with it and wither away with time because, because companies, at the end of the day, their bottom line is profit. We, what can we do to profit? And since this, since Marvel and DC are part of these mega corporate, megalithic fucking corporations now, under their umbrella, it's it's gonna be the bottom line from here on out. And so maybe not now, but maybe in a few years. They're gonna the the executives that own this property, DC Comics and Marvel, uh, Disney being the other one, and then AT and T being the other entity. Um, they're gonna see, hey, we're fucking losing money on this shit. What the fuck's going on? I thought this was a money maker, and then they're gonna start looking into it, and then we're probably gonna see a whole, you know, shakeup again, maybe. But who? But at but this point, like I said, uh, like, uh, but but like I said, I don't give a fuck. When I just do you think this is gonna happen. I don't know. Maybe in a few years, or maybe not. I'm just kind of speculating here, entertaining yeah, yeah. the idea. But at this moment, I personally don't pay any attention to any of that shit. I don't. When I go to the comic store, I know what I'm looking for, and I pick it out, and I just ignore the stuff that you know. I, I look at it, but sometimes I go and I check out the Batman book, I check out the Superman book, I check out the Wonder Woman book just to see. You know, pure. I'm yeah. curious. And a lot of the time, nothing captures me, and that's okay. You know what I do? I just put the book down and move on. Yeah, and you know, that, that happens to me too. I mean, I, I grabbed something the other day off the rack, and I, what I, I what I wanted to know was if I could pick something off of the rack that I didn't have to already be a part of, so that I could, you know. Um, and I, I've heard I've heard you boy Zach say this before. Was it Shooter? I think it was Jim Shooter that yeah. said that, that every comic book is somebody's first comic book. And I wanted to be able to pick something up that was even somewhat familiar and 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 get into it and open it and get into it. And it was a uh, X Men Inferno. <laughs> Starting to organize my stuff here the way that um, dementia patients do. Entertainment company will stop marketing this. Uh, so <laughs> Maybe Joseph. Maybe. <laughs> Let's see what it says here. Well, yeah, and you know, to add to what I'm, what I, from my little tangent, um, you know, these the people running these companies are going to do what they're going to they're going to well, do, and if they want to if they want to market to yeah. to uh, that demographic, then I say go for it. Like it's their it's their right. They can. Well, they okay, can, so here's the thing. I guess I, not that I'm I'm not disagreeing with you, of course. Um. Uh, there, there is that philosophy where, like, if, let me ignore this thing and hopefully it'll go away. Well, know? not hopefully it'll go away. It's just out of sight, out of mind. And if people, if, like, for instance, again, if other people dig that stuff, like, for instance, the people who do read the current yeah. Superman title, right. they could be, for all we, for all I know, they could be enjoying it. And if they're enjoying it, yeah, it may not be my cup of tea, but hey, at least he's buying the comic book and at least he's reading it and enjoying it. So I say, let them have it. Why not? There's enough to go around is when I, is my point. And that's why I'm focused more on indie comics because right. I like what's coming out of indie comics. And Superman is not an indie comic. It's a corporate-owned character. And they could do no, whatever they like- want with that character because it's theirs. It belongs to them. And so indie, it, it's, it, 
all the IPs that are popping up belongs to the creator. So that's what I'm looking for. That's what I want to see. Well, that's why I'm right. focused more on indie than I am corporate comics. Let, let, if people still did corporate comics, that's cool too. I have no problem with that. It's just I personally, I'm going to focus um, and invest my time and energy into producing my own you know, indie creations and also support other people who are trying to also, you know, get noticed because it's a, it's a fucking, uh, very, uh, competitive field, man. Like, you know, you know, I mean, you see all the, all the countless, um, announcements, announcements, right. Of like the pre-launch or the, it's or the hard to the keep book. up with them. Honestly, it is exactly. So in the competition, the reason why I asked you if you used Indiegogo on your phone, because I don't know if it happens to you, what happens to me whenever I try to log into Indiegogo on my phone, I put in my email, my password, which is done with like, you know, uh, um, you know, your face. You know, you just look at it. The password comes up and whatever, and right. I go and I tell it, okay, go, and then it comes up where I have to put my password in twice. It's really aggravating. I don't, I don't know why that happens. Well, you can first you can problem. Your settings, you know. Well, no, no. What I mean is, it's a uh, it works the right way for everything else. Logging into your bank, logging into whatever. Oh, else. I see. Whenever I go into Indiegogo, I'll put both of them in. I'll hit go, and it'll ask me for my password again. I'm like, why does that do that? And it's just on the phone, not on the computer. And it's whatever. It's it's, it's some weird hiccup, but I'm hyper aware of how it makes me want to. A lot of times when I back stuff, it's when I, I'm at work and nobody's looking. You know, and I'll be listening to a stream and I'll be like, you know what, I I, I, I want to get into that or I remember that I wanted to get into that. And then, you know, I'll go to get into it and I'm like, you know what, never mind. I'll wait till I get home because I don't want to have to hassle with whatever. This is one of the, um, like, say the way this is where maybe the next generation will be more ruthless. I don't even know what that means. I mean, I know what ruthless means, but what's the point? And entertainment companies will stop marketing social justice warrior stuff to them in favor of macho, selfish, 80s. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm selfish. <clears throat> I'm selfish because I want people to actually, like, I, tw- I, I, I think I've got like an eight-part tweet earlier about somebody, it was uh, Eric July was talking about, um, um, do you really think that uh, uh, jo- um, Jonathan Favreau and uh, whoever the other guy is, uh, Dave Filoni, Boba Fett, right? Filoni, right? Working on the, on Boba Fett aren't going to inject their like leftist whatever into things. Yeah. And my first reaction was, well, the Mandalorian didn't seem to be overly. It was. It seems like, and I've I've been a fan of John Favreau ever since Swingers because I thought he that 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 he and um who played Travis the tall guy um oh Vince Vaughn yeah that that they, they, they were like a modern day Abbott and Costello or or a oh, uh, um yeah Laurel and Hardy you know like they were they had their C3 PORT R2D2 thing and it was in that movie and it was also in this other movie called Made so I like I respected his talent he directed Iron Man one of the 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 I honestly, I don't think it's the best Marvel movie. I think it's the second best Marvel movie. I honestly, oh yeah, which one is the best Marvel movie for you? I'm curious. Um, uh, Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah, that's up there for sure for I me do. too. I do. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, Joe, uh, can I come in the middle talk about shit? Yeah, no, that's correct. We were talking about it. I am talking about SJ Job. W representation. It's something I saw. I was I was watching another show on another network that is what some people would be considered like. I think it's center right. Other people who aren't in what a, uh, stuff that's happening in the world today is starting to become outright evil. And the things that I believe that where a lot of these ideas start, and one of the reasons why this is happening in comics. Is because comics is supposed to be something for not, not exclusively for children, but it excites the imagination. And I've always thought that about um, science fiction, uh, right. where science fiction is a genre that I believe is more powerful than any other because all of the ideas that we used to have in science fiction are realities now. Uh, some of them, not all of them. 
All right, be me up, Scotty. How do you? When does Kirk say "be me up, Scotty"? What does uh, he? I don't. I don't know. I wasn't a Star Trek fan, so I wouldn't. Yeah, know. but you've seen it before. I I know you know. Yeah. The, like you've seen an old episode where he opens that communicator, flips up the lid. And uh, says, no, actually, oh. I, I I have not. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I really haven't. I, I, well, said, the thing. I, I mean, found I found Star Trek to be extremely boring. I wasn't a big fan of Star Trek growing up. Oh, uh, okay. Well, no, I, I get that. Um, now I had the benefit, if we can call it that. A, Star uh, Trek invented the iPad. No, I think that was 2001 Space Odyssey, Joseph McCorkle. Well, I would if say you that, remember in 2001 Space Odyssey, they're having their lunch and uh, you can see them kind of using a touch screen, touch pad on their right. on the table. I, if you watch 2001 Space Odyssey again, there's a, a moment in the in the movie where they're they're like, I guess they're show, he's showcasing their everyday life in the space station. Yeah, and one of them is one the of the scenes is they're eating delicious. lunch and they're they're watching something on an iPad, and that was 1968. So, when did Star Trek come out exactly? Now that's a good question, huh? Star Trek was in the 60s. Give me one second, I'll be right back. All right, 2001 invented the space potty. <laughs> What's the space potty? Now I'm curious, Joseph. The host left the stream, so I have no control over the uh, controls here. So you have to bear with me. I'm here. I'm just, uh, I'm, I got to turn the mic off for just a second. Okay. Uh, but I don't know if they had iPads in the original Star Trek. Hmm. I wouldn't know. Okay, original Star Trek came out in 1966, so perhaps, yeah, maybe they if they invent, if they showcased them, I guess, in the beginning of the first few seasons before Space Odyssey, that's two years before Space Odyssey. But Star Trek Next Generation for sure did, okay. Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> It's cool, man. Just don't yeah. do it again, please. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> um, but he's, he's, he's referencing the tricorder. The tricorder? Is that what the... Tricorder. The... Tricorder. Tricorder. Okay. Yeah. That, that's the <laughs> the, uh, uh, the iPad, like the touchscreen. Like that's the idea they introduced in that show? Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll, find, uh, I'll find it here. Okay. So Next Generation was 1987. So in the late 80s, they probably... Well, yeah, I had a sister. The Trekkies were introduced to it. I'm referencing the pad. Oh, wow. Look at that. Okay. The ADD. So Steve Jobs probably just borrowed it from uh, Star Trek then. And that's why he called it the iPad, maybe. Maybe. Right. I'm going to uh, share. I'm going to share. Speculating here, right ladies here. and gentlemen. Oh, um, I don't know what. I don't know about the. Oh, well, yeah, 87. That was that was more of a next generation thing. No, yeah. He's saying that the, they introduced the pad in star trek next oh, generation yeah, sure. in 1987 so huh interesting right, going here stop share sci-fi oh, does God. indeed stimulate the imagination joseph well said no well, it does right. and and this is this is exactly um exactly my point so you're concerned that perhaps this hijacking, as you uh, – well, not, not just you, but most people are claiming is that it's it's to um, program? I'm totally boomering this thing. <laughs> I, have to I have to drag this over and then – shit, because there's, so there's so many tabs up. Slides. Share screen. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing this whole – all right. That's a tricorder right there. Okay. That's a communicator. Uh, this might be Dr. McCoy's medical device thing. Or no, the tricorder was connected to this, I believe. Via, via, oh, okay. Whenever, yeah. See, I, I wouldn't know of these okay. things. Right. Whenever all. Kirk said, be me up, Scotty, he did it through this. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. That, that, that looks like a and, – and it was literally – he would just use his wrist and just flip it up. That lid would flip up. Be me up, Scotty. Okay. <laughs> So basically what happens is you get these you get these two things together this and this 
And what you end up with is an iPhone. Uh, there was also what? a... No, really. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on. Back up. How do you, if you wait? Did you say if you put those two items together, put these two you items create together, an iPhone? Yeah, you put these two items together, and you end up with what is essentially an iPhone. This is the, I'm sorry. This is your phone. It's, right. Out is my mouse is coming across there. This is your phone, and this is the computer that just tells you everything. I mean, because you basically have the world's knowledge at the. In, literally in the palm of your hand. I see. Okay. Now, all right. For a second, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> right. I mean, they were imagining it as sense. two different things, but it's, you know, you brought the tricorder down to the planet so that you could read what was going on with the flora, the fauna, the atmospheric perspective, whether you I see down okay. there and whatever. Gotcha. So essentially a supercomputer and a phone. Don't know why they didn't put those two things together. Um, Steve Jobs uh, did that. So. Well, he didn't really do it. He just you know, make sure people who knew how to do it would build it for them. Right. That's my, no, that's exactly. My that's, that's, that's one of my favorite. Um, that's, that's one of my, my favorite lines from Dave Cronenberg's the fly, you know, he, she, you know, uh, he's like, uh, um, there's a Gina Davis's character. So, oh, you know, how did you do all this? I mean, you're like, like crazy smart. And he goes, Oh, well, I'd not really, I just, said to this guy you need a molecular analyzer that and a scanner right. blah, blah blah this and they made it for me and i just put them together right so i know what you mean he's good at getting other people to do it he is good at getting other people to do his stuff was it yeah I, like that movie that, that, uh, that movie that um uh, oh gosh i forget the director's name he did uh train spotting and the beach uh danny boyle danny i was gonna uh, say i just watched the beach the other day i forgot that yeah was it's it. uh was it called uh what was that movie called? Was it called 28, uh, days, uh, 28 Days Later with Danny Boyle? Sunshine was Danny Boyle. Um, right, right. But what was the one, what was the one about Steve Jobs? Was it called Jobs or was it called? Uh, yeah, it called? the TV one was Pirates of Silicon Valley. I should just have a, an IMDb up. Well, anyways, there's a there's a good part in the movie, or well, they showed it in the trailer where he said that he's uh, when uh, I think um. I guess his number two, the other uh, Steve, the one who built the Apple computer too, the one who, who uh, the Apple two, was his number two guy. Uh, Steve Wozniak. Steve yeah. Wozniak. So he asked him like, "What do you do?" Like in the trailer, he's like, I asked him, "What do you do?" And then he says, "I'm an orchestrator." You know, I yeah I tell each person how to you know what what note to play, and it comes together in the symphony. And I was like, "Oh, that's a great uh, great analogy of what he did." It is, and I've I've experienced working with uh, people like that. Um, okay, now M Michael, uh, what's his face? Michael Fassbender plays Jobs. Yeah, I don't know the yeah. name. Yeah, I, I actually, I it was actually know. well done, and I know it got panned by some by Seth most critics. Rogen played Wozniak. I did not know that. Yeah, Seth Rogen. Yeah. How about that? Jobs. Ashton Kusher. Jobs. It was just called Jobs, not Steve. Okay, that's Ashton Kushner's movie, but I'm talking yeah. about the Danny Boyle one. Yeah, did he say one. that? The, the Danny Boyle is the other one that with uh, Michael Fassbender? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, directed by Dan, Danny Boyle. And what, what's that one called? In the one, in uh, it's just it was called Steve Jobs. Okay, all right. Gotcha. Yeah, so not Jobs, Steve Jobs. Um, it's funny that you mentioned that, too, because here we go. Yeah, Steve Jobs, you know, you know, oh, someone actually made a great uh, uh, digital comic about um, Steve Jobs. It was actually really damn good, like the way he did it. And I can't remember the guy. There, name. There's a Pirates of Silicon Valley that is uh, a made-for-TV movie. No, this was a comic book. This was a uh, an okay. online comic book. Hold on, let me see if I can find it because it was it was pretty great actually. Like the the guy who wrote it really did a great job with this. Um, Check out, um, check out comic the, book, uh, but see if I can find it. This the still image for trailer number two. It goes right to the thing that you were saying. Yeah, he's an orchestrator. He just orchestrates. He has. Yeah, a, yeah. Made, I remember that, that. That stuck out to me big time. With uh, yeah, in the trailer, yeah, and and I, was like, I like that. That that's pretty good. That's pretty good. How they summed that up. Um. Um, a lot of, I've worked for people like that and they're not necessarily the greatest people to work for. Um, <laughs> I, I, bet. Yeah, 
especially if you're the one with all the talent. Not, I'm not saying that I'm the one with all the talent, but if, if everybody else around you has more physical talent than you are, then you become the tool. And that doesn't right. always feel great. Well, hey, you know, um, I, I always say if you, in life, you're given the um, you're given the role and you got to find yeah. out what that role is and uh, just go with it. Once yeah, but like a good actor. I mean, if you're a really good yeah. actor, then you should be able to play a few of them. Exactly. Um, and, and But, you know, that's uh, OK. The so way I, the way I would look at that is is uh, if I'm being used as a tool as like someone's master like vision. Yeah. I well, can at least say, you know, hey, I, that's you know part of me is in that in that vast vision that he has. So, hey, without right. me, it wouldn't have worked. So that's cool, right? And then that's and a lot of times that's what happens. Now that the 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 person that I was experiencing with, like, I left that partnership because I didn't think um, I didn't like the way that he was treating the customer base, right? And I thought it was going to be bad for reputation. And then started mm -hmm. getting into some other things where we're not just painting bikes we're welding on bikes and doing things to the structure of the bike. And I'm like, I know that you're a neophyte and I'm getting out of this thing before somebody gets hurt. And uh, some people almost have, and, but that, I mean, that's a whole other, that's a whole, it, that had a lot more to do with ego than, you know, than, than anything else. Right. Um, all right. So the thing that you were saying before, about um, where it doesn't bother you as much. Right. And, and I'm not even like saying that it, it that it bothers me. But if we can see something like this happening to the mainstream comics uh, right. market, and it's a lot easier to to uh, to weed out in the independent comic market, I'm going to actually be doing a, a review on this a little bit later. I always want to make sure that I get through the um, the entire like everything that I bought from this one person and 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 do my uh what do you call it? like due diligence before i actually open my mouth and say anything because uh, I, I i don't want to say that i see it in the independent comic thing but there's uh it's a lot easier to if i make a mistake and i end up buying a mainstream comic book i'm losing six bucks but if something's being sold to me and i want to back a comic book because it's like it's like 35 dollars or 40 dollars right. or something like that right and then, then I get it and it's absolute uh, uh, crap or all it's doing is preaching to me. Right. And I'm like, you know what? That's, you know, kind of, you know, kind of bullshit. And some of it may be on me because right. I, it, I it is, but, but the way I would see it is, uh, is that it, you got to Like I would, I would implement the, the whole like fool me once, you know, Copy shame on you before story. twice, shame on me. So if I, if that happened to me, for instance, right. Yeah. I, I paid 35 bucks. I wait right. for the book for a year, a year, you know, for them to complete it. I get the book yeah. and then I read it and it's, and it's terrible. Right. Then the name of that author will never get another. You scratch it off your list. Again. Right. Well, and that's one of the you reasons know? why I'm trying to give the entire catalog of what I got from this one creator, the entire chance, because the one, the, the book that I'm reading now is uh, dripping with, a um a political ideology that i don't necessarily uh, agree with i i can appreciate it i can appreciate it the way i can appreciate anybody's opposing view but there are other titles that have nothing to do with it i want to see in the same way that i will be backing marvin number two even right. though right. even though marvin marvin because i knew what i was getting when i backed marvin melvin God damn! Sorry. <laughs> no, it's because Marvin is in the chat. And I'm, okay, so Melvin, what what did you like about Melvin number one? That's going to get you to get number two. How about that? All right, this is going to sound like shit, but it's everything that I saw in the back of Melvin number one that's going to make me want to get Melvin number two because it was teasing Melvin number two. Ah, okay. The, the and I try to do this any any time I review an independent book. Because right. I realize that it, you know, it's just like, there's a whole reason why I have this. You want something out of life, you got to put yourself out there. And that kind there of thing takes balls. Yeah. So, and okay. All right. Well, hold on. Hold on. Before, be, wait, hold on. Before we go forward. Sure. I want to ask you a side question here real quick. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sure. Sure. Uh, based on the amount of indie comics that you have read, that you have backed, that you have yeah. received. Yeah. And actually took the time to read. Yeah. What's the common... I guess uh, 
I don't want to say mistakes, but what's the common shortcoming of an indie book? Like, say, compared to your experience buying professionally made comic right. books back in the 90s. So what is it that, that's missing that you've noticed on based right. on the amount of indie comics that you that you have read? Uh, yeah, we actually, I think I think we went over this on a private stream before, and it's this. I think that because the uh, the indie comic books, uh, the Indiegogo stuff, mostly right. not indie right. comics that are actually brought out once a month for those who are able to do it, then great. Right. Um, there's a lot of story trying to be stuffed into us. It's it's ten pounds of product stuffed into a five pound bag. Ah, okay. And so, right. so that um, it, the 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 story doesn't take tight. It, 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 that happens in movies too. Um, Dune is a perfect example. One of the things that made that um, David Lynch version of Dune not work so well is that you were trying to put a concept that was massive and right. put it inside a two some two hour plus something movie. Um, the miniseries had a low budget, but it was actually more accurate to the story and you could absorb it better. So like a uh, North and South or the Blue and the Gray, like a mini series. The, the series, the mini series, when did that come out? Uh, that was um, that was a 1990s uh, something I've done on sci- sci-fi. No, not, not 90 something. It had to be, um, it had to be Frank Herbert's Doom 2000. Well, that's... That's the date of the report. Miniseries 2000. Uh, yeah, I will um, throw this over. Here. Whoops. My tabs aren't dragging where they're supposed to. I need another. Oh, uh, uh, by the way, I found I found that comic book I was telling you about. It's called Steve and Steve. Oh, OK. Have you have you heard of it? Were you telling me about it days ago or just recently? Just like now. Just ago? now. I was telling you that there's an online comic book about Steve oh, Jobs that's oh, really, oh, 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 oh. like, really fucking good. Yeah, yeah. And, Steve um, and Steve. Yeah, yeah. Because Steve Wozniak was the guy. And that, that's it's exactly what I'm talking about. Steve Wozniak was the guy with all the technical talent. Yeah. Like, and you see it in that Steve Jobs movie, the one with Ashton Kutcher. I think it's the dude who he's... Um, I'm never gonna read. I, I could. I am. I'm gonna have to IMDb him. Um, but he plays Steve Wozniak, and I remember playing this game on an Atari 2600. It's Breakout. All it is, it's the paddle going across the bottom of the screen, and the ball that bounces up against the rainbow-colored thing. And the people from Atari wanted there to be color in the game, and Steve Jobs said, "Okay, I'll do that." And he brought it to Steve Wozniak and said, "Can you add color to this?" And he did. And he basically was basic. Uh, all he all he did was he, he farmed it out the way that anybody else would. He farmed it out to his buddy for eighty bucks, and he sold it to Atari for one hundred and sixty. There you go. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, business artist, just like uh, uh, Andy Warhol uh, said. Why am I getting confused here? Uh, share tab no window. This. Um, yeah, I own this. This is actually pretty good, dude. I had no idea they even did that. Wow, it's a yeah, it's a thing. It's a whole. It's it's a real. F- and, and it's and is it well done? Is it was it like good? Uh, for the budget, I thought it was good. You know, it's is this one of those things where you actually end up sacrificing? Um, you end up sacrifice special effects for story. Ah, so the okay. special effects uh, the special effects are computer effects but they're they're year 2000 right it's right. four hours and 25 minutes over th- I think three two or three discs yeah three discs because there's the episode count right there so uh, each episode is two hours and something minutes yeah um well yeah one I, I would say it's gonna be like one in 15 I, I'm trying to divide time here four hours and 25 minutes for the whole thing. But uh, one of the reasons I think, and a lot of times this is what happens. There was a Left Behind movie that started Nicolas Cage that could have been a lot better than it was if they didn't have to pay for Nicolas Cage. There's, <laughs> All right. And, and All right. if you notice here, right next to, the, uh, to, to Paul, I'll tell you what. In the book, as far as the book goes, this Paul right here, let's see if I can make it... Um, 
How do I do full screen on this? Oh, it's down here. Okay. This, and I will try to, yeah. This Paul in the middle here is the yeah. most accurate. This is the, the most visually accurate Paul there is. Because they describe the Harkonnens as having like red hair. Oh, I see. And Paul is actually a product of uh, a hybrid between the Harkonnens and the um, and House of Trades. So if you've read the book and you can you, you can you end up appreciating the um, um, the series a lot more if you read the book and, you know, you can get it like, wow, they really paid attention to all the details that were in the book. I think that Denny Villeneuve's version is 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 probably the best. And you're not going to be able to get away with doing that movie. The, the, I guess the, what was my original point? See, this is why I put the word tangents in the description because <laughs> I knew that I know that's going to happen. I know I, I, I always do that. So the, um, um, where was I going? I, it had to do with time. Oh, oh, uh, the independent comic book stuff. Right. I think that they cram too much in to. Uh, a, a single issue. If you're going to do that, you have to be really careful about it. And you as a writer would know this. And I've heard Stephen King say the same thing that writing short stories versus novels is that you have to be really judicious in how you edit your own stuff. Right. Yeah. You know, cer certain. Uh -oh. Sorry about that. I've got a I got a space heater going here that uh, might be misbehaving. Do I still have you? Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, you have to be really careful in editing your own stuff, and this is something else that we were talking about before. Like in my own book, like I want to make sure that I respect the story and the audience, so that I'm giving them everything that they need. And you have to cliffhanger. It's it's a it's a, an expanded version of what you want to do with every two pages. You got to get that last frame on the right page at the bottom panel just right so that they want to turn the page. Absolutely. And I think a lot of times the, the story is in, in independent comic books. My biggest bugaboo is that um, you're you're not writing the story. You're writing the story in the timeline of how long it's taking you to get the book done. And you want to cram as much stuff in there as possible instead of paying attention to the cliffhanger. And of course, that's not everybody. Right. But that's, you know, like, I want to get to know these people more than you're giving me uh, time to do. Right. Does that make sense? Please. No, no it makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. That, it, and that is hard because, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, when you write something, when, especially for me, when I start to write something, I, I always keep that in mind, the forefront of my mind anyway. Mm -hmm. of okay i want people to identify with this character so i need to invest pages um so that the reader can see what this character is all about as opposed to relying on narration boxes or dialogue right um, actions are probably the strongest suit in terms of immediately letting the reader know what who you're dealing with in the comic book right. be it and it doesn't matter what genre it is it could be superhero, it could be crime noir, it could be sci-fi or fantasy. You got to have a human element to your character to identify, to, to have something that every, the reader can identify with. And uh, like, for instance, like the Vigilant Fury book that I'm working on right now, it's all yeah. through action. There's no, there's hardly any uh, dialogue in it because I want it to be action heavy because of the scenario uh, that's at play here. She's been kidnapped. Yeah. She, time's running out. So there's no time to like sit there and ponder, right? right. <laughs> sit there and like have She's two or three pages of, of dialogue between two characters. You know, there's not, there's no time for that. It's gotta be boom, boom, boom. But the trick, not the trick, but the, um, the challenge is to balance the two. Right. right? You don't want to have too much action where, like you say, you don't, there's no connection with the, with the character and you don't want to have too much heavy narration boxes or dialogue box or dialogues between two characters because they could drag the story down. Right. And so, yeah, you're right. I have the same challenge where I was like, how many pages is his story going to be? And the honest answer is, I don't know. 
Well, but, yeah. I mean, don't you find that I like, as I've been finding that like the more that you actually care about the story and care about the characters and mm -hmm. care about the audience mm -hmm. who's going to be reading this thing, you want to be accurate, but you don't want to be long winded. Right. Exactly. And, and but you want to have re enough respect for the audience that you can get them to connect the dots because that's the interactivity of the whole thing. Right. And mm -hmm. the, and the way to do that is that you have to put yourself in the shoes of the reader because you're also a reader yourself, right? Cause I'm a reader too. I, I buy novels, I buy comics. So yeah, I'm reading, I'm, I'm sitting down and taking the time to read the thing because I enjoy it. Right. And, and that's how I approach it personally is that, but to do it objectively, which is one of the reasons why like, I'll send you a page and be like, how's this going? Tell me the be and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be, uh, you have to be as objective as possible in order to really grow as right. an artist, because there's some things that you are going to try to write or draw in your, in your case. And it may right. not hit, it may not, it may not land, you know, because there's something off about a panel here, something off about a panel there. And it takes the reader out of the experience and you want it to be flawless. You want right. it to be a smooth, flawless experience. And you exactly. want them to lose themselves in the yeah. story. Yes. Yeah. You want them to lose themselves in the story. It's got to be cool. This is this is actually kind of goes back to um, what I was talking about with um, you know, this issue, uh, pun in, not intended, that I have with the way that the characters are 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 being written you're talking about superman now right so or superman versus well it's not superman it's that superman story it's that it's it's right. that it's a trick now there's a right way to do it and a wrong way to do it i mean there's but you know nobody in the de in, in the death of superman there isn't some sort of agenda that's trying to be shoved down anyone's throat. There's no preaching in a death in the family. There's no, uh, there, there's no socio-political thing that's trying to be, no right. one's trying to upstage the characters or upstage the story with where I want to stick my junk. That's exactly, <laughs> the thing that, well, no, but that's it. But that is exactly what's happening with, with uh, you know, Superman with somebody they'll say Superman, son of Kal El. Yeah. Not everybody who's looking at that book, and especially like those chrome cover speculators, they're not looking at Superman, they're not looking at the son of Kal El part. All they're seeing is Superman is gay, and this is a big yeah. change, and that's but, why I'm yeah, so I, the, the way I look at that too is like who I don't I really don't care, honestly. No, I, I right, but what I mean is now you're using that to bolster the you're, you're using that to bolster the sales of the book. You're right. Now, yeah. Now and it's, it, it's it, something it, like Superman is dead. Well, death is something that happens to the majority. In fact, 100% of people. So that's something that we can connect with a death in the family. Robin dying is something that 100% of everybody on the planet can connect with. It's part of the human condition. Wanting to kiss a boy is not something that 100% of the people on the planet, it's, it is not necessarily part of the human condition by and large. Okay, because, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point. That's a right, fair point. But, but because that's where the camera is being pointed at all the time, you know, because we're constantly being told, oh, there, this is, uh, so, someone is the gay and you have to look at it. Or, or somebody wants to chop this off or sew that back on or whatever oh. and make sure. <laughs> and, well, no, but you will, well, seriously, I mean, isn't that, that's the Jerry, Spr that's today's Jerry Springer thing. Here's the car wreck. Now respect it. You know, I'm supposed to respect somebody's bad driving and maybe, maybe yeah, in society. I'm, I'm, but, but the one of the things that happens to a majority of people in society is that they and i know you and i have this in common have a family and have kids okay. and want to spare them and keep their innocence for as long as possible and as long as stuff like this keeps coming at us all the time i don't want to have to i don't want to have to fight with like when i was a kid the thing that i fought with with my mom or my parents whatever would be this is the music I like to listen to. 
And I know right. that you and I have a um, uh, have an age difference. So like in the 80s, it was always the satanic panic. And for me, it was even worse because my mother bought into everything that Jim Baker and, and, and the 700 Club and whatever. Like, I'll tell you right now, like, I'm surprised that I have healthy Christian faith at all based on the stuff that I went through then because I had to sneak in any kind of pop culture stuff, comics, movies, whatever, like I was a member of the French underground in World War II. I, right. You know what I mean? Like, like I had to fight to get a uh, uh, um, to to work for with my own money and spend money on a stereo that had a dual tape deck because my mom knew that I was going to be copying music, Satan's music, from my friends down the street, and it was a real pain in the ass. Okay, but that and that's and and, and that's she's you know she's trying to protect me from what she thought was pure evil, right? When it wasn't, it was just an expression of. It was just an expression of what people are going through. These are these are songs about, uh, you know, love, relationships, being angry, being happy, partying, whatever. And it's all part of the human experience that 100 percent of the people on the planet can understand things about love, about, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, women or what rock and roll makes you feel like and these emotional things. And it has an influence. And that's the thing that they were afraid of. Comic books have an influence. These stories have an influence. Right. When you see the when you see the beginning of um, um, was it Amazing Stories, the Steven Spielberg thing, and it was a series in the eighties. The whole opening sequence to that story, or to that series, you know, I got to save that window. Somebody was talking to Sarah Frazetta earlier, and I got stuck at my in laws' house and I couldn't watch it. And I seriously want to make sure I see that. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can find it here, but it, the the whole opening sequence to Amazing Stories was cavemen sitting around a fire, talking to each other, telling each other stories, and the right. idea being, of course, that that this television that you're sitting in front of is the fire, and we are all just telling each other stories, and these stories have an influence. Robin Hood is still a popular story today. The mythology that we used to listen to and learn about in school, we're familiar with today, and it just takes a different form in, in comic books. Right. Now our heroes only, it, I don't want to say only care about one thing, but the majority of the thing that they care about, and I'll say it again, is where you stick your junk. And <laughs> I don't know that that's the thing. Now, and you tell me, and be honest, is that the thing that you want your baby to ca to care about? Because I don't know that it's what I want my baby to care about because we are so much more than that. Well, but that seems to be the thing that everybody has to like above anything else. The, um, the what your favorite color is, your favorite foods and all this stuff. The first thing that's supposed to define you as a person is that. Uh, personally, like I, I wouldn't, but you know, like I said before, the marketplace is open to everybody. And yes. uh, if that's what they want to sell, then let them sell it because right. it is, it is an open marketplace and we don't have to buy it. No, and if also, they want to, if their demographics have racist. changed, you're look, look, look I, I, no. I can't look, I can't speak for any other parent by myself. I can only right. protect my own daughter. Just like every other parent has to protect their own children. So I have no say into like, yeah, I personally wouldn't because I would like her to get a certain age where she could understand and I could sit down and I could have a discussion with her. Right. And, and that's every parent's responsibility. Right. And so if though if that's being targeted to kids, then it, honestly, it, it does truly boil down to the parent who takes his children to the comic book store. And when, the, when their child comes up to him and says, I want to buy this comic book, then it's the responsibility of the parent to say, okay, I'll buy it for you, but I'm going to read it first to see if it's okay for you. Right. And, and then if, if, they, if they read it and they, and they feel that it's not appropriate for their age, then he can say, you know what? No, I'm sorry, you can't read this. And, of course, the child may throw a fit, but that's not, that's not up to the child. It's up to the parent. So you're, you're gatekeeping. I don't care. I'm gonna I keep all kid. I want. I'm gonna get keep all I want until she turns 18. Right. But until then, I'm gonna fucking gatekeep 
all I want. <laughs> right. Right. And so, um, you know, people who try to use that, I, like, I don't give a shit, dude. I don't give a shit what you do with your life. I'm doing, I'm living my life. I'm going to respect your life. You're going to respect my lane. I'll respect your lane. Well, don't sure. get into my lane. It, it, but it doesn't, don't you find that it only works in one direction? Yeah. And then that's when you deal with the, you know, certain situations that, that may arise, you know, when that happen, when things like that occur. But at the moment right now, as we're going, you know, going really back to what we're, what we're talking about. And, uh, <laughs> Sorry, did you see that? Freaking Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what and and uh, and i get your where you're coming from dave yeah. but i i personally like hey if, well it's if, not if, it's not even from a standpoint of uh um of of hate as much as like i love people i really do everybody does you know like that joke like uh, you know sex is like pizza even when it's yeah bad. no yeah i i think i know what but you're saying like i i love chocolate but the tr- moment someone tries to shove it down my throat i spit right. it out Right, yeah, and, 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 I, not, and not guess only, what? And, and not guess only what? do you spit it out because I, and I spit out and I and I and and I stopped buying DC and Marvel comics because the more I bought, the older I got, and, right. and the, the more I kept buying and I kept reading, the more I realized, hey, you know what? These stories are not really. I'm not really enjoying them anymore like I used to. Is right. it because I'm getting old? What's going right. so on here? And then I found and I realized. They're not so writing it for me. Anymore. So, so you're literally spitting it out now. Imagine this, because this is usually what happens. They shove it down your throat. You have no yeah. choice but to spit it up. In other words, puke. But now they're upset with you because you made. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about puke. Well, no, I no. I mean, what I mean is like in in is as far as like I love pizza, but if somebody tries to shove it down my throat, literally, yeah. you would choke. And you would probably throw it up. I've seen it happen before. Like okay, the, the, yeah, all right, all right, but 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 I, now no, but, that's not happening no, here but, with but now you're being. Now you're being pilloried because you just made a mess all over their kitchen floor. They came in, assumed control of what was going on. It's got to be this. You got to have it all the time. And when you say no, it's your fault for being wrong. No, that's not true. That's not what I'm seeing. What I see, well, I'm going to tell you what, I, what, I've, what I've been observing. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you what I've observed so far ever since I got back into this Twitter game, you know, and I got to, and I get to see the it, 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 it is a game. Old. Unfold in real time, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, it's yeah, it's pushback. They they release something, right? right. You know, they they announce something. This is what's going to happen in a few months, right? And for in the to, for the sake of the subject matter, right? Let's just say yeah. it's a Superman story, right? The son of Kal El. All right, they announce that, and then of course people have an opinion about it. So you have those who are stoked. Because oh my God, representation, yay, go or let's go for it. And then of course you have the other side who doesn't like it, and that's what the, the, these little fights occur. Because everyone has an opinion and everyone thinks they're right. And, yeah, yeah. And I, I, I say okay. Well, I saw it. It's not for me. Not my cup of tea. You know. Good luck with that. Have fun with it. I'm gonna go over here. And no one bothers me. No one says anything to me. No one says I'm a bigot. No one calls me a bigot because I just simply ignore it. Right, and, right. Well, not, and, and that's the way that it should be with like and, down and, my throat. And, no one's no one's showing anything down my throat because I read the headlines. It's out there. They're announcing it, and I just go, "Okay, cool. That's cool. Good luck with that." And I move on. Well, how that's many? I, let me ask you this: How how many? And I'm not saying that this is like literally where where we're headed because after a while there is going to the pendulum is going to swing back in the other direction. Right. But yeah. yeah. Like I think we're actually seeing that happen. Yeah, where where um, no, I don't like it, so I'm not going to watch it. And then the and then the numbers go down, and people start. Yeah, and then they're going to start freaking out, and then go, "What happened?" Losing, hopefully, What's losing going their on? jobs. Now, and then a lot of people may lose their jobs. Yeah, I, I hope it doesn't, but I hope they change their tune, or I hope they they have a different approach. But because right. I remember when I was uh, at like knee deep collecting comic books every month i show up every, almost two weeks a month i would show up because there, you know two certain books that I, they came out you know i, I they came out in different months yeah right? like so, a paycheck yeah exactly so i was fucking buying stacks of comic books at some point at, at one point in my life i didn't want to say my be, between 20 and 25 just a shitload yeah um i wish i wish that was me now <laughs> Who's no, i can't copy? i can't afford it it's just the damn comic books cost too damn much Right. Uh, oh wait, I lost Great my point. Oh, shit. Uh, what was going to be my point? I forgot. Well, you were reading all these uh, comics, buying them all the time, and 
how old were you about back then? Yeah, like 20, 25. 20, right. 25. Okay. That's when I bought a bunch of shit. Um, oh, yeah, and I remember. And I remember when The Authority came out. Warren Ellis, Brian Hitch, Wildstorm. I okay. think it was 2000, 2001, if I, if I recall. I can't remember the year. Um, and they announced that Midnighter and Apollo, which was clearly an Apollo, uh, Apollo, a Superman and Batman archetype, just in the Wildstorm universe, were gay lovers. Hold on a second. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm gonna uh, pull up a. Okay. Well, let me, let me keep, just keep going. Keep they, they were. They were uh, gay lovers, mm -hmm. and I remember distinctly. Remember, nobody giving a shit because. Everyone was just stoked at the idea of what the authority was because Warren Ellis, when he was hyping it up with, you know, the, you know, his interviews in, in Wizard and, and everywhere else where they had, you know, they covered comic book, uh, the comic book industry, people were hyped about the idea of a Justice League gone, like a, a nihilistic Justice League version, which was fresh. It was new. It was hasn't really been done before. And, and, uh, you know, it blew up. I remember it yeah. fucking blew up. Everyone wanted this book. <laughs> And right. no one gave a shit that these two characters were gay lovers. No one gave a shit because they bought the book. The reason why they bought the book is because it was a great fucking story. Right. And so if... Did, it if, drive, uh, did, did that aspect of the book drive the story? No. Did it drive but, the story? But, but, but however, however, it was a selling point. It really was a selling point because they mentioned it. It wasn't top. It wasn't like at the top, you know, like it is now. But they mentioned it. And it was like, oh, wow, interesting, cool. I remember thinking, like, all right, that's that's not bad. You know, it's, it's not Superman and Batman, but right. it's like Superman and Batman. It's, and at the same time, it was like, that's pretty, uh, you know, funny, too, at the same time. Right. Well, let me let me ask you this. What, what do you like typically? What do you like to get on your pizza? Pepperoni and um, jalapenos. Okay, it's like like uh, like uh, uh, bell peppers or something like that. Like something. No, no, like spicy. pickled like jalapenos. No bell peppers. Okay. All right, all right. So I'm I'm a I used to be a sausage and mushroom guy. Now I'm a pepperoni and mushroom guy. Okay. And that's and that's the thing. Um, but if I order a pizza with a little bit of pepperoni and mushroom, even though I like pepperoni and mushroom, and all they give me is a box full of mushrooms, that is no longer a pizza. Right. So in this particular case, that's a selling point. And, and it's going to be a selling. Is it a selling point because it's controversial? Or is it a, it's sell a selling point because it was the first of its kind? Right. Right. Or so whenever you're first. Yeah. Whenever you're first, it's you're always going to be right. controversial. Yeah. But it wasn't it, it wasn't. I don't remember outrage. I don't no, no. That. Well, that's not it. Well, of course, it's not outrage. I mean, if somebody gave me a little bit too many mushrooms on my pizza, I'd be like, all right. So they're generous with mushrooms. But if they totally excluded the crust and the sauce and the cheese. And I'd be like, um, you know, this isn't really, uh, my point is, is that they do something like that and they write it in there and it's not the thing that drives the story, but it is something that sells it because it's controversial. And even further, they're not, it, it is, it, is that in the story yeah. because they're trying you know to what it is. No, you, you know how they, how they approached it in this, in, in this book, like it was no big deal. Right. Like it was, like it was normal. Like right. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're lovers. So what? Right. So I've got uh, one of the things I've been trying to fill the spaces in on is my. Uh, I've, I've got a. I start a long time ago. I started collecting the uh, the John Byrne Superman from you know Man of Steel. Right. And um, I think Mike Mignola was one of the guest pencilers. I just picked up that issue, and I, I keep trying to to fill in these holes. And one of the things I remember about it was that. That there was a, and I think it's McTaggart, a a woman police captain that Superman would consistently run into, mm -hmm. and she had her own story about realizing that she was a lesbian and blah blah blah. And there was actually a, a like a, a, an issue in there with a good chunk of the story that was dedicated to her as a character, and it's one of those like okay, that's a thing. And now we're still Superman who really just is good to everybody. Unless right. even, the, even the bad guys get the benefit of the doubt. Right. Right. Um, but it wasn't the, even on the cover, 
it wasn't even sold as it wasn't done. It right. Wasn't yeah. done as, it wasn't done as a gimmick to bolster sales. Right. It but you see, that, about, that... It, it was a thing about that character that wasn't even the driving force behind that. No, character. A- absolutely. Absolutely. But I guess my point is that what the, the main point I'm trying to make is that we have no control how the people who run DC and Marvel uh, operate the machine. Right. Like we really don't. The only ones who have any say are their bosses. They're the ones who get to decide who gets to run this machine, DC and Marvel Comics. Yeah. Those and lately, and, 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 and as a comic book reader scary. myself, I can't speak for all comic book readers, but I couldn't speak for myself. Whenever they change something that I personally don't enjoy anymore, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, it doesn't even have to be you know the whole uh, um, stuff that's going on now. It could just be simply things like they changed the writer that that approached the characters a certain way, you know, that I don't really like. Uh, the story is something I don't really like, or the art is something I don't really like. Whatever the case, whatever the reason may be. Oh, they did that to Excalibur. They had like Alan Davis and Paul Nair, and I totally love their stuff. And then they like ten. 10 issues later it was like rank yeah ads. see see and you stop buying the book because it's no longer uh, I mean, that I, you enjoy I, i'm kind of a completist so i keep i kept okay no it. but that's fine but, but i know what you, you mean it's, it's, but, a, it's one leg of the stool there's art right right but you it. like every other comic book reader in, in the country anyway i was disappointed yeah yeah you are you're no longer happy with the quality because you're enjoying the other artists quality right so um i guess uh this whole notion is that they could sell this product however way they like. That's the way I look at it. And they go, it's not going to bother me. And of course, it, there's plenty of people who make videos about it. They, they, they you know, come up with, they have a shit storm essentially about the, the move, the current move. Right. And my philosophy, my perspective, or my outlook anyway, is let them do what they do. It's their right, just like it's your right to make your videos. It's your right to produce whatever call it, whatever stuff you want to produce. That's your right too. You, you have every right to the marketplace, like everyone else. So, I say if you don't like it and you want it to go back to the way it was, let your pocketbook speak for that, because that's how these corporate entities work. They want your money, and a lot of them. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to admit, I worked in a corporate environment for a lot of years. Yeah. And I've seen it firsthand. I've seen firsthand how scummy individuals rise up in the ranks because they know how to kiss ass. They right. know how to talk to the higher ups, and that's why these people get oh, yeah, yeah. they, they, they get they get you know bumped up, and that's, that's okay. Bad. That's okay because that's what they want to do. All good with me. That's not me. Yeah. I've so said I'm saying is, well, at some point, but here, here, but let, but is, let me let me let me finish though. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I saw uh, you know firsthand. How it it wrote it rose and then it fell. Meaning, I got to see firsthand these people who I knew were incompetent in terms of managing the store, whatever the case may be. Right? Sure. Um, they get their 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 stripes, I guess, because they, like I said, they know exactly how to talk to the higher ups. They know how to how to con them. I guess you could say a confidence man, right? Someone who looks yeah. confident. That's what a con yeah, man I, is. I, someone I, who's just confidence. I'm living now, it. And so um, I got to see how they rose up the ranks and then no, no year than a year later, most of them were gone because guess what happened? It caught up to them. Their bullshit caught up to them because they found out, oh, actually, you weren't the top salesman that I thought you were. You're just, a, you're, you're just someone who's like, I thought you were. I'm hoping that happens. Soon. Yeah. And, and that could that could very well happen where eventually the executives, the higher ups who don't really care about that stuff. They only care about the big money, right? But when they start seeing like, hey, something's dragging us behind here. What is it? It's this comic book stuff. Oh, really? What's going on? Then when they start doing that, mm-hmm. that's when they, they, you know, the hatchet comes out and people get let go. Well, isn't that what AT&T did? They bought DC and they concentrated on the movie stuff and started to not worry about the comic book end of things. Right, right. But they're going to learn quickly just how much they rely on the comic book stuff to make their movies and TV shows. Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the point. So 
where the comic books are the thing, the stories are the thing, the caveman around the fire is the thing that's influencing just those people right. that are around the fire. And, the comic and books, hold on a second, where the comic books are influencing uh, what the movies are being made. And right. the, those movies and those comic books are influencing the society that they're in. What sort of a society do you want your baby to grow up in? One that I create, one one that I uh, uh, create myself to counter. Right, exactly. That's what it's I'll do. Be, I'll introduce right. her. I'll introduce her to the to the old stuff if she wants to read the comics. If the, if that's even if she even likes comic books. For all I know, she may hate comic books. She well, may I like something else like deeper, which is why I've always said like we need to teach chess and poker. Right, but no, I I plan on being very active in my child's life. I have no. Like I have oh, no great. like uh, uh, I, I have no plans to allow anyone else to raise my child. Well, and so, right. so if if, as, the, if, the, if they might if, try, you're you're gonna be you're gonna be standing in front of her with a, a buckler and a sword, swiping away at all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, well, well, it, it's it's gonna depend obviously but, on her age, but um, right. And I'm not I'm not trying to do one of those. You know, uh, uh, the the, the culture. The, there's there's various aspects in the comic book culture as I've noticed over the years. There's not one. There is no such thing as one whole comic book culture. There's pockets of cultures within a larger culture, and uh, the larger culture is just the the fact people like comics. Yeah, Those are, you know, and the and the pockets are the people who like the certain kind well, of they comics, like that. Right? Uh, they they like that method of storytelling. Right, superhero. Yeah. Oh, I prefer you know, I prefer uh, crime noir, or I prefer sci-fi. You know, everyone has their own taste. For the fabulous right. furry freak brothers. Right, and but we're all but we all join together because we all enjoy comic books. It's just we like our little brands. We like a little certain kind of brands of comic right. books, and that's what that's what keeps us. That's what's uh like uh keeps the everything like I guess uh. Uh, pockets of little little like cultural pockets within this larger culture okay. so my i guess the, going back to uh to the corporate thing they can sell whatever they want at this point because the people who are in charge that's what they want to sell and if that's when they want to sell then i say let them sell it. <laughs> let them sell it if you don't like it don't buy it don't pay any attention to it just focus on the other stuff like for instance um like there's the pockets we have in our indie comic book scene, right? Yeah. Is War Campaign, Comics Gate, Anti Comics Gate. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just straight up indie people who don't even as associate with any group per se. Yeah. They just they're, they're just indie. Oh, I'm sure there's all kinds of guys. Yeah. So there's four I, I, sub I, I, there's four subgroups to indie, but they exist. That's how it works. That's how it always goes. Subgroups of those subgroups. Yeah, it's human behavior. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, and I, those I people. Guess. Those people within those subgroups, they left, they stopped buying the mainstream stuff and started looking at their own, started looking at what, hey, what what else is, what's going on over here? And that's why. I guess my question is a larger one, though, because like comics, it's, it's, it's one of those kind of look at it like a multiplication train. Why I look at it, go all the way back to the caveman telling a story around a fire. Right. Because that is just influencing those people around a fire. But the way that the media is now. And the subject matter of the story, where back then it was about I killed a dinosaur, or this heroic thing, right. or this love story, and you know what have you. Mm-hmm. Do you think that there is something that we that, that's? I was just I'll ask you this, and you personally, and then I'll ask you another question after that. Okay. Do you prefer? And I'm not, I'm not trying to pigeonhole you, but do you prefer this to Jonathan Kent, I kissed a, I, I kissed a boy? Uh, let's see. To be honest, I don't really know exactly where I'm from. I guess it really doesn't matter. What matters is that I think and feel as an American. Okay. Okay. Now, that's what Superman has always been. Well, but well, that, 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 it, no, Superman's like that because a writer wrote him like that. Oh no, no, but but, but I mean, really, since since Superman has ever been Superman, that no, that, I, I it, it depends on who's editing the books and what the publisher wants the direction to go. 
That's that's okay, why well, that's why that's why I keep you, uh, you're, going back you're a to writer and you made your own book and you edited your own book. Right. Who were you trying to appeal to and what was your message? Oh, I was trying to write a, a you know a, a story that most most people can identify with. But, exactly. Exactly. But, it's, but, <laughs> but you have to understand, Dave. It came from me, from yes, my right. own personal experiences. Right. And my outlook on life. Now, when and, you and, were... and, and any writer who says otherwise is is fooling themselves. Well, because no, Ghetto Dragon, mean... Ghetto Dragon has a lot of my own personal elements within the story. Now, it's not the for not po the political commentary is not the forefront, of course. But no, that's one of the things that I like about it because um, but... I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know you as well as I know most of my friends or even myself, of course. But I do. Uh, uh, um, it's one of the things that I like about the book is knowing where it came from. And, and when no, I'm reading I, that book, absolutely. I can say, "Yeah, you know, I agree with some of these things. That's great. It's a. It's very much a. I want to well, protect here's, my family. Here's I want to do something good. I want to uh, vanquish the bad guy and uh, I, all of those. I get that. I get that, Dave. I get all of that." But like I said, it depends on who's running the machine. And currently, the people running the machine are not the same people who who that, that ran the machine from that age of the the page. You, I don't know what year that page was from, but different oh, that people. Was, uh, that was that was uh, one of the Man of Steel. That was one of the. Okay, so it was eighties. So okay, it was, it was mid eighties. Those people are long gone from running that machine. I was amazed. and and it was a different time. Uh, a different big bigger company owned it. It was Warner right. Brothers, not a big corporate entity like AT and T. Right. You know, Warner Brothers at least understood what they had, which is why they kind of left them alone for a long time. And it, and guess what? It it worked out better for them for doing that because we got Watchmen, we got Dark Knight Returns from it. That's what we got from that. From Warner Brothers going, you know what? We make movies, but we're gonna let you do what you do best. We're gonna just you know make sure you guys don't you know fuck up. So here's your budget. Use it wisely. And if you use it wisely, we'll leave you alone. And that's what happened. We got some of the best shit from DC during that time. Right. But now it's a different tale. Now it's a different story. Now you have a tight, tight corporate structure that doesn't give a fuck about the artistic integrity of the people involved in their machine. So if that's what they want to sell, if that's what they want to give to readers... Then hey, it's it's out of our control. We can't control that. The only way we can control it is if we stop giving them their, our money. That's it. Right. So right, and then stop giving the stop giving them their their money, which of course most of the time when I go into the comic book shop, like I said, I'm always trying to like fill in holes. And um, I think uh, Marvin said that would have been before Warner. Maybe maybe you're right. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I don't know exactly yeah, no. when. Warner Brothers bought DC Comics. I would uh, I would defer to Marvin on this only, but mostly because I know that I don't know everything. And, right. Yeah. Well, and, whatever the case, yeah. the eighties. Marvin actually glows knowing comic books. <laughs> yeah. Like, what would yeah. You want to yeah. I, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about that for sure. But whatever the case, during that time, that's when DC produced some of their highest end <laughs> books. You know, like they was like they were hitting out of the park. You know, when it came to producing comic books during that time, Swamp Thing with you know Alan Moore Swamp Thing was was freaking, you know, selling thousands and thousands of copies every single month. It was amazing just to look at the numbers. Like, wow, dude, this is amazing. But like I said, it's it's a changed guard, you know, it, it, and they want to push a certain you know uh, narrative. Then then hey, if the higher up said it was okay, then that's unfortunate for a lot of readers. But it is what it is. 1989 looks like 1989 Warner Communications okay. merged with Time, making DC Comics a subsidiary of Time Warner. No, that was Time Warner, but when did Warner Brothers, the studio, the movie studio, bought DC Comics? Like, what year was that? I think Time owned DC. I think that's what you're saying. Is Time technically Warner Brothers never acquired DC? Warner oh, Brothers okay. DC Comics were acquired by the same third party conglomerate. Jeez, the stuff you learn on Quora. Yeah, I know, right? And he acquired. You know, I, I am. That's oh, why okay. I'm a, a so national acquired Seven Arts, which own Warner. The... That's usually what it ends up being. It's just layers of, of that stuff. So it was the '70s when they bought them, or or no? 
Uh, in 67, Kinney National acquired National Periodicals, which was the company that would become DC Comics. I see. In 70, Kinney acquired Seven Arts, which owned Warner Brothers. Kinney National spun off its entertainment assets and formed Warner Communications. Good Lord. And this is a master of an MBA from Pepperdine University. So uh, as much as I hate to put my... Um, you know, every A in a Ivy League basket, especially where you know, <laughs> right. vaccines are concerned. Uh, I don't think that there's a political bent to that comment, and I'm going to buy. Uh, in, in a buy, sell, or hold aspect, I will buy that. That looks legit to me. Hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's a mess. Dude, he's right. <clears throat> Now the yeah, it, it's a it's a mess, and hey, like I said, you know, hopefully they will uh, kind of scale it back or change things. But at this point, I'm actually digging more what's going on in indie, and I'm focused more on indie right now. And that, and no, I'm I having, know, and I I'm get having so much, I'm having so much fun checking out other people's work in progress, to what they're gonna do. It's great to see the indie scene flourishing. And seeing a bunch of great, like great books starting to come out, like top quality books that compete, in my opinion, with the corporate mainstream stuff, and that includes Image and Dark Horse Comics. Right, there's and a lot, lot of good stuff coming out and from indie, and I'm really excited about what's what's at the uh, what's what's on the uh, uh, in the works with a lot of these creators because they're they're their, they're starting to bring their A game, man. Because you know, the more you do this, the better you get. And I'm personally am very excited about it. And I, and like I said, I can't help it. I can't help knowing what's going on because it's in my feed. I go on Twitter. Right. And, and while I'm looking for, you know, uh, some art, original artwork, some artists are doing, or maybe a, a writer who's like, who's plugging their YouTube channel, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you know, amongst that, that feed, there's always the headlines of what we see on you know, um, what bounding into comics, uh, anything that Ethan Mascara may, may tweet about or uh, think that the, the Mary Sue or what's the other one? The comics beat. Yeah. Comics they, beat. they show up in my feed because I'm, right. I follow nothing but comic book creators. And that's that's just the way it goes. Well, I know you said that before that the um, uh, yeah, hashtag in indie comics is one of your. Is, is it's, that's what. Yeah. Doing. Yeah. And it's always going to be that way because honestly, indie comics has been good to me. I, I was able to publish my 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 good old dragon comic book, you know. Thanks thanks to the the supporters of of AD Comics who are looking for something new, something different, and you know, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride and die, man, all the way with this. And and I get I get there's factions. Ride, ride and die, man. You sound like a biker. All of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, and, you know, and, I don't want to talk because I don't want to talk anymore. And, yeah, and I know everyone has their factions. Okay, I, I'm not gonna ignore that fact. But my thing is, hey, I just want to venerate the comic book culture. I want to venerate the comic book medium because comic books for me uh, was some of the most like it's the, one of the best underrated medium that we have in terms of telling stories. And movie, you know, movies are great. Right. Novels are great. But comic book, the comic book medium man, is so is, is special because you have the combination of words and imagery to tell a great story, potentially tell a great story. And there's been gems over the years, gems that people still talk about to this very day of how good it was because every, because the creators of those certain books, and you know, which books we're talking about the top tens, the top twenties, whatever they brought their a game to the, to the book, to the story. And every indie creator should do the same. You should bring your a game every time. Because the competition is just going to get fiercer and fiercer as time goes on. And the marketplace will decide essentially who is on top and who is at the bottom. You know, and and that's unfortunate, but that's just the way it goes. You find that, don't, wouldn't you agree, though, that this is a part of affecting the marketplace? And if social media has the influences that it does, you know, people who yeah. are to go back and forth on yeah. Facebook, back, back and forth on Twitter, and back and forth on and YouTube, like in this, I like this conversation to me is really healthy. You know, like it's like a muscle, you know, your first amendment. Yeah, exactly. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. 
Yeah, exactly. And and I and I get I I I subscribe to a few outrage channels. Don't get me wrong here, because a lot of it's pretty uh, funny. A lot of it's pretty fun to listen to. Oh, sure. Isn't it uh, how? Uh, um... Um, they say oh, okay. That, the edge. This is this is Marvin's uh, comment. Yeah, that's right. This is Marvin's thing. I've got the first. I want to say. Let's see. The edge, three, volume three. one, trade paperback, collecting issues one through four, and 130 page adventure. Nice. Yeah. Nice. See, I think I'm. I think mm-hmm. I'm behind. I think I'm behind on one. But there's a there's a there's a fourth one. And that, is there I, um my local comic uh, shop actually? Um, are there any preview pages uh, listed here? Puts this out on the rack. Well, this is Kickstarter. So or is this like a? Oh, okay. It's a pre-launch. It looks like a setup page. Is there, is there a pre-launch? Is that what yeah, that means? Is that what I see there? This. Okay. All right. Yeah, gotcha. They must, uh, they must already have my info. Oh yeah, because I got something from uh, your boy can Zach you, had mentioned it, and then can you um, possibly blow up that image there that's under the edge? Is it a uh, open a new can tab? You blow it up or no? Well, I can. But then you can't. You I, can't click on the uh, the image in the. In the no, no, no. I can. I can. I just have to. Um, I have well, to. Sh- I have to share that screen. Okay. Um, well, yeah. So I I'm in the school of thought of of you know I don't want to fight with anybody. I just want to make good comic books that's what i want to do that looks dope dude it looks really dope i'm telling you the artwork on this is it's it's um uh, yeah there's a lot going on what's the lot going on no with the space everyone's doing something there are great and i end up becoming um i don't want to like i end up becoming an art critic because i'm because, I mean, because i like i'm more of an artist than i am a writer you know i mean and even right. then i'm more of penciling than inking than coloring and stuff and right which is the core of where where the artwork you can't ink something that hasn't been penciled and the design aspect of some of these costumes i I, i'm really into it i mean like some of the um there there are streams from like way back where marvin was on here and he was showing me this book and it was like i couldn't believe this is like this is a local guy who's creating this and i don't i believe marvin is writing he's not uh Oh, oh, Marvin is the writer. He's not the artist of the book, right? And I, I okay. I'm, I'm gonna have to go back in the book to remember who. Okay, who. yeah, I'll I'll check out the link tree, uh, Marvin. It's, yeah, this this this, this piece looks pretty great. It's really well done. And, yeah, uh, it's. Let's see if I can see if I can. I also like the. Uh, nope, I, don't I also like the lettering. I, I like how they came out the edge. The logo is cool. Yeah. That little piece missing between the D and the E. Just, yeah, that's really well done. I like the E too. I like the way the E is shaped. Yeah, I DM'd you the um, the link tree. Okay. Cool. So let me see if there's something better in there. That link tree is something that I I'll, I only just um, how come it's not letting me? I guess I have to copy and paste. Uh, I guess I have to copy and paste it somehow. But um. Um, the point being, uh, it's like one of the greatest titles to any book, oddly enough, to Ellen DeGeneres. My point, and I did have one. Why does not let me, you know, it's probably because I'm using a brave search and not Google, which can read your mind. <laughs> I'll get it up. I'll, I'll, I'll get it up there eventually. But this, uh, I remember like streams ago. Um, the one, this is this guy in the gray here. I th- I'm pretty sure it's this guy in the gray because you see him repeated here, and he, uh, well, his hands. You can see his hands here. Oh, here. I see. I see. Okay. Is he like supposed to be really super duper fast? No, he's like a Jamie Madrox. Oh, okay. Okay, but and this is the coolest part about it is um it's sort of like uh remembering clash the titans whenever uh charon's arm got chopped off his hand got chopped off and he ended up leaving. no his head with head been he had been dec- no it medusa's head okay i'm gonna get this and that the more i remember clash of the titans from the 80s the more it comes back to me medusa's head was in a bag and drops of blood from her uh, uh landed on the stones and cr- ended up creating these giant uh, scorpions. 
Okay. I know that's cool. Short story long. This guy replicates himself from bleeding. Oh, cool. I know. Right. It's just yeah. a one, that one little tweak. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. The multiple man can make copies of himself because he's a mutant. Great. How does he do it? I don't know. He just does it. Okay. Now, no, and, and, and that's that, the, and, and and for the record, there's nothing wrong with that. The Revenant, the, the, the yeah, the, the character's name is the Reverend, uh, uh, the Revenant, right here, and there he is, telling nice. telling me telling me how this works. <laughs> <He> goes, <laughs> the whole I like, oh yeah, well he makes copies of himself. How does he do that? Well, his it, you know he has to bleed drops of blood on the ground. Like, oh my god, that is such a fucking cool twist. I love that. <laughs> Just yeah, that one little thing, and but the way that this this artist, you know, have you ever seen narwhal stuff? Yeah. Okay. Now it's not as detailed as this, and the composition of this, and the, being able to do something as complicated as this, and still have it make sense where it's leading your eyes from here yeah. to here, and now you've got this blue spot, and he's being electrocuted, and now you've got the purple thing here. Um, th that which is a doorway and she can jump in through things and that's her power and it just there's something about the composition of this thing like I just I it I can look at this for the longest time and it's not just the color it's not just the composition right. but the way that this artist does his his proportions and the way that he um uh, I don't want to say reproduce, but rethinks the human figure and the way that he, you know, like all the little stuff, the little folds of fabric. There's something about this artist, and I, it's it's like this thing that I can't explain. I don't know why I like to look at narwhal stuff. But well, because narwhal, narwhal has a good, um, personally speaking, anyway. I yeah. think he has a really good storytelling eye. He knows how to how to make the beats of a story. Yeah, well, but I'm, I'm I'm talking about the aesthetics of his art. It's no, right, right. Very, but that's the reason uh, I'm I'm explaining why it works for because, a page, right? For a page, yeah, for for a page because he is still using the storytelling rules. It's just that he's using his his own artistic style, I guess, his artistic st approach. Right, but that's what I mean. Like I I can appreciate the way that he can tell a story from panel to panel, and even right. the artist as well. Because you can have an artist who is like really good at the technical aspects of being able to draw something, but then being able to do sequential storytelling, like you're talking about, is is really good too. And yeah, but, no, that's a that's a whole different like craft in itself. You got right, you got to know how to do that. Right, because if you don't, then your your book suffers. Right, but specifically the way that this person is drawing, like this girl in the middle here, and um, I, I'm, I'm gonna forget her name, but I, yeah, no, everything, like I said, there's no wasted space, everyone is doing something. But the way that he composes the human figure, which is something that I've concentrated right. on, like in forever, there's something about this person's style that I can't quite explain the same way that I can't explain. Narwhal doesn't even put this kind of detail into his stuff. And I no. can't figure out what it is about his stuff that I like. There's, I, I have a friend of mine. He like had a helmet painted years and years ago. Still keep in touch with him. Don't have a ton in common, but we're good friends. And I wouldn't be able to explain to you why that is. That's, I guess, what I'm getting at. There, right. I just, I, I really get along with this art, and I, and um, and I have a hard time putting it into words. There's something going on in here. The same with that. There's something going on with a rights and or a Frazetta. And I know those are big words to throw out there, big names, but there's something raw and natural about the way this thing works that I wish I had. Cause it looks well, like I, I, it's, it's um person. Like I, I personally believe it's the, the Kirby effect. Cause that's what Kirby did. Kirby yeah, was really I don't good. Really like Kirby. At, understand yeah, the Kirby, yeah, Kirby yeah, was, Kirby was really good at making sure every character on his page was doing something. And that's what this artist is doing yeah, here. He's doing the exact same thing, but the only difference is obviously it's a lot more detailed. It's a lot more, uh, it looks more mainstream personally. Yeah. It looks like a, something from a DC or, or a Marvel book. But there is and, an anatomical accuracy yeah. and emotion that's, that's happening. Yeah, it, it's, it's the straight up textbook Kirby for sure. And it's core, Kirby, yeah. Kirby is the grandmaster, man. He's the one that that pretty much revolutionized everything when it came to telling a comic book story, anyway. And this this has the same energy. 
Right. But if I was to say like that, there's uh, like I can appreciate Kirby's impact on the industry, but me personally, he's not one of my favorites. He's not even on the list. No, of course. Yeah. Uh, right. uh, he's not he's uh, not one of my favorites either, but I can see the genius as to why everyone reveres him, and especially yes. Yes. Com- yes. comic book artists of today and of the 90s. They all all the all the comic book artists that made it that create that made superstar that got to the superstar status level. Right. All right. of them the, 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 the one thing they have in common is they said I learned all my stuff from Kirby and from uh who's the other one? Uh, Will Eisner. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Well, what does that mean? You, you and, and of course, the, then you got the other ones, John Romita Sr. He was also great. Yeah. Um, and then there was uh Steronko, Jim Steronko. Yeah. Um, so it you know this 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 image here is giving me those those vibes. Like he he like yeah, there's no like I said, nothing is wasted in this image, and it's great, it's fantastic, it works well. You know, like I can't I can't do it right now because I'm um we're what we're getting on to what here, like two or just like two hours. Yeah, two hours. Yeah, I was gonna tell you I I have to I have to bounce. Right. But uh there is gonna be a point where I wanna get Marvin back on this stream here because I one of the things I wanna ask him is did he get lucky with the people that he is working on this book? <laughs> Sometimes you do, Dave. Sometimes you get lucky as a writer. Right. Well, it, with the, like the entire team. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like somebody else is doing the colors and whatever. And like, did, and, and not only that, but like a good band, you know, where, you know, the, the, the everybody in the band is individually very talented but it still takes a special something right to yeah and that's of. that's the uh a, a good comic book writer also right. needs to be a good um or uh, what do you call it a conductor of an yeah right. well yeah the comic book creator if you're writing you still have to have an appreciation for the yeah. other parts and know exactly oh how absolutely to absolutely 100 percent, 100 percent. if you don't have that you're doomed I think it's, mm-hmm. uh, so. Is uh, Marvin is answering the question? Did he get lucky, or was it on purpose? Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure that luck luck does play a role. I don't know if the yes is got lucky or or uh, or what, but um, or he's agreeing with the overall sentiment. Well, I want. I just like is everything that's happening in that picture you're doing, or like I said, did he just? Did I, he I'm just gonna say. Up? I'm gonna say he it is. Just, he had. He had to write it down. He had to tell the artist what he was looking for. Well, right, and like exactly, like I know that, but I've seen good characters drawn badly. Yeah, you know what I mean. I've I've right. seen like um, they live is a great concept, but luck I and honestly, uh, luck and patience. There, yep, we there go. you go. Yep. There you go. Well, he hit it right in the head. Luck patience. and patience. That's patience. absolutely true. What's that? <sighs> if you don't, if you don't have it by now, we talking about like superpowers before, where you're just a good listener, and that's the reason why any any time we stream together, it actually works out. Steve Jobs didn't invent Batman; he just conducted. <laughs> 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 well, Dave, uh, it was actually going over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to bounce, but uh, I just want to say that this was a, a great stream. Thanks. No, I, I know where you're coming from. Your your absence of attention is your pushback against the things that you don't like in the industry. My what? Your absence of attention and money, or where where? Yeah, uh, yeah. If if something doesn't keep my attention, if something comes out that it doesn't interest me, then I'm not gonna pay any attention to it. And everyone, like for instance, I'll give you a good example here. Game of Thrones is a good example. Okay. Everyone talked about that show being the greatest show ever. I watched a few episodes and I went, "Nope, not for me." And that was it. That was it. Warren, everyone still, guess? everyone had their, you know, their their Game of Thrones moment, right? Where right. people did not were not happy with the last season. Uh, I oh yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I saw all that stuff and I was like, "Cool." I still don't right. care. You know, I'm I, I'm sorry that happened the last to you. Season was like, terrible. Like I'm sorry that happened to you guys because you guys were invested. You get they they, oh, they yeah. really hooked you, you know, and and I under, and I get that. I understand that, but sometimes you just can't hit out of the park. And there's some things that I just personally I don't really care about. Right. And Game of Thrones was one of them. But that's not that doesn't mean that I shit on the product. Like the quality was great, the acting was great, everything about it was great. It just wasn't for me. That's it. How far in did you get? Just one or two episodes, and that was it. Yeah. 
Right. And I was right. like, nope, I'm not doing this. Not yeah, that, it. Was, that was a little bit of a slow burn. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, in, in, in the beginning it was, because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I got through the first episode and I, I didn't understand why people were, but I knew that there was something there. Like this many, right. like, like a billion Chinese people can't be wrong about rice. So, all right, I'll give it a little bit extra. Um, uh, make it around. Is this fair? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 actually, I'm not. Although, not I gotta say, never. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is possible to make. <laughs> no, uh, no and, and for the record, I'm not a prune, right? I'm not. I'm not old fashioned. I'm not, you know, like. <laughs> you I'm mean, not gonna be all like, oh, this is disgusting. This disgusts me. I'm gonna stop watching this shit. No, it's I, that that stuff doesn't bother me. It's just it 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 just wasn't for me. I just didn't. It didn't hit me right. the same. It hit everyone else, I guess. I yeah uh, um yeah so so Marvin's gonna be making the rounds in April. I will definitely hit him up. No man, you're okay, in the cool. you're cool. in the DMs. Uh, sure. We're we're not gonna let you get away. Um, it's gonna be fun to hear more about. this. Yeah story. yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to see what this project is all about. It, looks, it is, and that, it's, it's, it's that one it's, image alone. It's it's great. The more it's indie great. stuff, the more indie stuff that I get into, the more um and especially locally, I I appreciate what um. Uh, what Marvin is doing with <laughs> Ed, his, Joseph? What the hell, dude? <laughs> Right, you know what? If you want to turn and and, and speaking from, I'm not no a, mind chest way, no mind chest. If you, if you want, if you want to, if you want to turn yourself off to that, turn the camera on yourself and watch yourself do it. And I guarantee you, in the first five seconds, you'll be like, nope, no more, <laughs> no. Well, nope. uh, like like I said, uh, uh, I was I really you know, like I, said, the stream. I, 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 I like that we we had a discussion. And, right. Uh, we should do it more. It's just, this was fun. We should do a lot more of this. Yeah, I mean, if we can schedule something more. Um, con- oh, Terry. And yeah, no, I I understand what he's talking about here. Um, he, he's talking about that whole. It, it'll be that it'll. Yeah, it'll be the type of thing that makes you want to shove a boy uh, 10 feet and or 20 feet and walk and, and paralyze him. It's, it's, it's that bad. You'll just. Want to oh, shove right. Him. Yeah. That was that wasn't that the first episode. Yeah. When that happened? Yeah, probably. I think it was, I think it was the first or the second or something like that. But oh, um, yeah, yeah, I remember. It's been it's been a while since I. But yeah, it. like I said, like I said, out of sight, yeah. out of mind. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to think about it. The um, yeah, I've got uh, two. Uh, yeah, that two weeks during the day, two weeks during the evening. That's like my schedule flip flops all the time. But Sundays seem to be the. Yeah, yeah. This would be cool. Sunday like a Sunday Sunday. afternoon, sip on some wine, maybe some beer, maybe some whiskey next week, next time. It'll be something to talk about. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yourself? And, and yeah. uh, not censor ourselves, but, you know, discuss. You know, I'm all yeah, about no, that. I it. I'll, I'll, I'll start thinking about things I want to talk to you about. Because yeah, there was, know, a, like, I, I actually had, um, I, um, what was it? Uh, well, I mean, we got onto it a little bit. Um, I had watched, like, Nobody. And I'll tell you, like, honestly, like, the streams that you were having with your, uh, um, the, the, the friends of yours that you had in, in, in film, Oh right, uh huh. You guys were just uh, were discussing cinema. I love those. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. It's, a, it's just you know uh, things start opening up again, and and we all went back to our lives, you know. So it, it, the time is no longer there. But um, no, this this is great. I, I really dug this, and uh, we should do it more often. Uh, try to anyway, because I yeah. know you know life life happens. Yeah, um, I mean, we'll just uh, keep putting it out there until uh, um, we'll keep putting it out there until people start to notice and then quit. And then they'll wonder what happened to us. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, uh, we'll do it until enough people watch and then we'll get canceled because they'll find this first stream and they'll be like, oh, you see what they said? Yeah, yeah they you see what they things. said. They said bad things about John. They Pence. said bad things I'm about actually, certain group of people. Well, and now we're. It's like when. Oh, the, there you go. Yeah, Joseph, uh, thank you for reminding me. Yeah, you can catch us, Joseph McCorkle, myself, yeah. and uh, James Callahan on Breaking Cannon. No, I have. I've been listening. I, I listened. I listened to that. I've got that in my. In, you're right there next to Dan Bongino. There. Oh, nice. I, I'm. That's well, enough. Dan Bongino. I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, he's um. Uh, he is like a former Secret Service, uh, former New York cop. Um, he's oh. part. He's like. He was. He's one of the original investors in like Rumble and Parlor. It's. Oh wow. Real, okay. Yeah, it's it's real right wing stuff. You'd oh, it. oh, you fucking Nazi. I know, right? <laughs> when people ask me what my lineage is, I don't, I, when people ask me what my lineage is, I don't, I don't tell them that I'm half German. 
at the good, because I would because the, if you told me you were half German, I'd be like, oh, you're a fucking Nazi. You're exactly. Nazi. Exactly. Quarter Dutch and a quarter English, because then they will just go off the deep end. And then you'll you'll just start doing what uh uh what's the name Doctor Strange love will do. You can you can't help yourself but raise your your <laughs> raise your arm exactly. and salute. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Doctor Strange. You can't help it. You're like ah. No. Doctor Strange or Doctor Strange Love? Doctor Strange Love. Okay, I, I was like, gonna like, I don't remember that part. <laughs> no, Doctor Strange. I don't remember Love. that part of the movie. Okay, <laughs> no, all right, no, I I know what you mean. Um, no, no walk step for me, man. I I, uh, I march to the beat of my own drum, and it's usually paying, playing improvisational jazz, which means I dance Ooh, like nice. plain. Nice. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, whoever watches this video afterwards, you know, check out. Star Wars Breaking Canon, where we talk about yeah, um, see, everything see, Star Wars. I'll say, is, is one fourth German, uh, Julius? Does that bother you? That bothers me one fourth. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, it bothers me because it's only one fourth. So there. <laughs> all, right, all right, Dave. I, I, gotta, I really gotta go. All right, I'll talk to you soon, man, and uh, I'll just save half of the other show for next week. All right, man. Sounds good. All right. Talk all right. to you later, man. Take, all right, take care, is kick from studios? I don't, no, I don't want to kick the guest. He's just gone though. All right, all right. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, it's hopefully it's funny. Hopefully, I've had enough um enough. In, but uh, until next time, um, I'm gonna go searching for Mr. McCorkle on on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. No. Well. Okay. Yeah. That's exact. That's exact. <laughs> all right. Well, oh, nope. all right. I just backed into my space heater, that which means uh, that I cannot be trusted with uh, small appliances. I'll talk to you guys uh, next time we're on. I'll make sure that I get a notification out to all you guys on Twitter, and uh, hopefully you'll come back um, because I I don't get out enough, and I need I need some kind of friendship. Talk to you later.